Monsters lurk in the shadows. Most people don't believe in monsters, but we know the truth. They're real, and it's our task to bring them down. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Vorpal Tales, where we present a plethora of terrifying tales and awesome adventures through muted music. I am Dwayne. You guys can find me on the internet at Made of Kimchi. I will be your storyteller for this little one shot. We will be presenting to you this evening Monster of the Week going to pieces. A little happy little one shot. Should be pretty fun. But if you guys are interested in Vorpal Tailness, make sure you guys seek us out on the internet and don't forget to follow us here on Twitch. Make sure you guys check out our archives on our YouTube channel and make sure that you subscribe and hit that bell. Don't forget to visit our webpage, VorpalTales.com, that has links to all of our social media, our Discord, and our Patreon. And if you're looking to increase your RPG and dice repertoire, make sure that you head over to our affiliate link on our webpage. Check out Hit Point Press, QU Empire, and Gem Hammer and Sons. Also, if you're interested in sweet, sweet Vorpal Tales merch, again, check out the page. Buy awesome stuff. Our shoutouts, as normal, Go to Astral Tabletop for the virtual gaming space that we will be playing beautiful music into your ear holes. A wonderful thank you goes to uh, Evil Hat Productions and Generic Games for the power that they have given us to fight the apocalypse. Ah. A very big thank you to Dark Somnia Music for the terrifying tales music that you have heard in the theme intro music. Much love goes to uh, Lovey Rebellion. Make sure that you guys check out their love or their, their love site, their website, loveyrebellion.org, and see all the awesome things that they are doing. Much love goes to our Patreons from the Sticker Snacks to the Jabberwockies. You guys keep this project moving forward. And last but not least, thank you to all of our subscribers, our viewers, and our fans. We love you all. Before we get this underway, let the players introduce you guys. Tell everyone who you will be playing and tell everyone where you can be found on the interwebs. You are muted. Okay. Tis I. Hi, my name is Ray Alexa. You can find me over at Twitter at RH Hastaway. Uh, I will be playing August Kelly, your expert this evening. What happened? Hey, there's Jason. There he is. Am I back now? Yep, you're back. Okay, I have no idea what happened. I wasn't muted. My sound card just apparently decided to freak out. So, I am the underscore touring. I will be uh, playing Ed Dirksen the Flake tonight, and I can be found on the internet as the underscore touring. And I am G3 Billion, otherwise known as John Smiter of Loud Background Music here in a second. And I will be playing our uh, Doc Hudson, our gumshoe for tonight. And hello, I am Kisama. You can find me on Twitter at TrueKisama. And today I'll be John Big Buck, the mundane. You called? Awesome. I'm having some audio issues on my end. I don't know what is going on. But nevertheless, we are going to push forward. So all of our players have a... Uh, we have created our characters in the last 15 minutes. Monster of the Week is a very easy game to set up your character. I suggest you guys go out and check out this cool cool book that i have uh, that we will be playing out of today this is the tome of mysteries for monster of the week I have a nice little mystery that we will be running through today so are there any questions about your players uh, your character sheets so f thus far uh, uh just what i asked in the chat for me in the chat. Like, well, the Zoom chat. Oh, we will we will get to that. We haven't even started the story. Uh, John, I know you were a little bit late to the uh, party. 
tiny bit as per my usual, unfortunately. So really the only thing that you need to fill out <clears throat> on your nice little sheet is going to be under your ratings. You have uh, five or six lines that give you different choices of your different ratings. You need to choose one of those lines and those will be your pluses and minuses for all of your rolls. We will be rolling two D6s, plus or minus any modifiers that you may have. I, however, will not be rolling anything. In this game, which is powered by the Apocalypse, the Keeper has to do no dice rolling. So for anyone who is uh, likes to be a storyteller with no dice rolls, this is a game for you. So. I have, I believe I have picked my ratings. All right. Go ahead and look through your uh, weapons as well. It should say, like, pick one or two. Uh, your move as well. It should say pick an additional because you already have two chosen as the gumshoe. So let's dive right in. The day is now. The time is today. The place, Chicago. You all have met once or twice. Whether you've worked together or not is sometimes confusing. The group that you guys work for usually has a set group of investigators that investigate the weird but you guys, you get the ones that nobody wants. So they just call in the randos. And you have heard of a series of animal mutilations and killings that have been going on in the upper Chicago area. As you guys are in your van, rolling into Chicago, the radio is playing. And you hear that the latest series of the killings has happened in the Cook County Forest Preserve area. There's been a number of dead goats and chickens that have been found in the Oak Glen Preserve in the Chicago neighborhood along the northern edge of the city. One of the spokespersons for the, uh, for the preserve, a Miss Gabriella Cruz, or no, not Gabriella Cruz, my bad, Castilla Theodrak. Uh, she tells the TV station that, you know, they respect that, uh, that these things have been going on and they can't stand for these type of mutilations and that they wish that the Prego, the followers of Prego be brought to justice. In the radio broadcast, it, you, you are able to learn that the followers of Prego are a uh, they're simple religious believers they do practice in uh, uh, sacrifices animal sacrifices but they have always done it in a humane manner <clears throat> a Dr. Craig Sullivan speaks on their behalf saying that uh you know, theoretically that, you know, this is wrong in this day and age and it should be, it should occur somewhere not in the open. And he doesn't think that the Prego believers are the ones responsible for this. And that normally the carcasses that are sacrificed are done in a very humane manner and not spread all over the place. In some instances, it is even more humane than animals that go to slaughter for food. And this is where you guys roll in. You hit the northern side of Chicago. And you roll up to the 
most recent place that the uh, mutilations have take place have taken place. You see that there is a uh, one specific police officer that seems to be running the scene a little bit. A couple of onlookers. Nobody seems very interested. It's more the you know, forestry workers. A couple of people that look semi-religious in nature. Some of them get odd looks, sneers from other onlookers. So how would you guys like to approach this? With this game, you guys have moves. And you can use any move that you wish. Whether a move requires a roll or not is up to me. <laughs> uh... I am John Keeper of the Gumshoe Reader of Words and Pages. I apologize for the delay. It's all right. We're all here. Uh, so my question would simply be, what seems to be the most straightforward way to go about this? That is up to you guys. Uh, uh, um, so August will look at her companions and say, so I personally think that the best way about this is just straightforward. So you just want to walk up to them and talk to them? <laughs> yes, it's a lot less, it's a lot I less. I talked to a guy once. Yeah? Just the one time, yeah. It didn't, it didn't, didn't turn out great. I asked him for coffee, and he only gave me two two sugars. Hey, no cream, I'm sorry, no. okay? Look, it was a rough morning. He says in his, like, barista uniform. Oh, just... no. Oh, no, I didn't mean to personally insult you. I'm sorry, barista. Can okay. you go fix my cup of coffee now? Weeks ago. Right. If this makes well, this more easy for you guys, so like I said, you are the, you're like the C team almost, of the, of the <laughs> monster <laughs> hunters. Listen, yes, yeah, I think you're good now, Jason. Okay, okay. Listen, I don't know what's going on with my sound, but listen, listen, the number on our on that alphabet is like we are on the top three. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> I have a move. Mm -hmm. called Connect the Dots. Okay. At the beginning of each mystery, if you look for the wider patterns that current events might be a part of, roll plus sharp on a 10 plus hold three, on a seven to nine hold a one, spend your hold during the mystery to ask the keeper any one of the following questions. All right. So I would like to do that now. Okay. Go right ahead. Roll those D6. Two D6 and then add your sharp. Add my sharp. Okay. Because maybe this will help us get uh, the ball rolling here. Uh, so s I rolled a six and a two, so six, seven, eight, plus two for sharp puts me at ten. So I hold three. All right. So Drop that means you get down. three questions, and you can hold those at any time. Your power is any time during the mystery, not just right away. Yes, okay. All right, so we're coming just kind of barreling out of the back of a van, is that? Yeah, it is. It, For lack of a better term, it is a, it is a, a janky mystery mobile. Okay, so very important question. Does it have a wizard painted on the side of it? No, it actually no. has a unicorn with a cat on top of the unicorn 
wearing a monocle, a knight's hat, holding a lance. This is acceptable. Yeah, sir, meow is a lot. Yeah. Uh, August is like, can, we'll, we'll be taking a lot more seriously if we get just a normal vehicle. A normal vehicle. What's wrong with the van? I happen to like... Uh... Ah. Sir, meows a lot? The, the horse with the horn. Yeah, so... That's good. Oh, that I'm was just... painful. I'm sorry. <clears throat> so Ed, Ed looks this? around with his, his wild eyes, his messed up hair, and his ratty, mismatched clothes. And he says, uh, I hate to tell you this, kid, but... I could show up in a Rolls Royce and people are still going to look at me weird. So, I mean, if you're close to me, you're probably going to get looked at weird. We're, and, you know, with all, with, with all loving respect, I, you know, we might not be the A-men, but we are the A-men. So, uh, this is fine. Uh, Everything's I'm fine. Just, I'm just saying, with that unicorn on side of our van, we might as well be the Y men. I said, why are they here? Because they have a unicorn on their van and Sir meows a lot like a boss. They don't give a shit. You know what? People when when we show up, people go, you know what? They showed up in a van looking like that. They're either idiots or they just have no need for anyone to judge them and they're badasses and you know, you know exactly what i'll take the second one. yeah exactly yeah. 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 yeah yeah like my manager's orange and green tie yeah <laughs> he just runs his runs his hand along the mane no one can hurt you no one can hurt you it's fine as you guys are rolling up you see that there are a couple of of news vans and uh one individual is being interviewed a she is a a white woman with long curly hair uh you can catch parts as she's speaking as you guys are rolling up and you know unloading out of the van uh she seems to be using a lot of like law terms uh she goes on to talk about how she's a lecturer at nwu um and how she she totally deplores you know, the, the animal killings. But you kind of get a sense that it's not because it's a bad thing. It's more that it lowers property value. Seems to be kind of missing the point, if you ask me. Um, uh, wow. What are you going to do? Is her name Karen, by the way? Absolutely, that is a Karen. I am with the hip young kids. And Karen and did she and, ask her manager yet? All right. So, why don't some of you more presentable folk go over and uh, see what you can learn over there? And uh, I will. Maybe see if I can sneak past some of these people and take a look around where they don't want us to be. Uh, you guys do have special IDs. Yeah. Think, think of the company that, that you work for as a subsidiary of a subsidiary of some black site company that oh. is a subsidiary of that to the FBI. Oh. So we got like official paperwork. Yeah, so we yeah. You have an ID. Yes. Yeah. We got like the, oh, the God. billfold. Like, oh. And no one. The funniest part about it is, is no one cares because they've never heard of us. But it's not. You don't associate with government. It, it more looks like a library card. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have like an alphabet soup? Like, no. There's no letter. No. Oh, <laughs> maybe we can make one up. <laughs> Department of Paranormal Investigations. Yeah, it's yes, the DPI. Oh, yeah. DPI. That's right. <laughs> Dippy. Uh. <laughs> Diplodocus. 
in the past when you guys have investigated some you know other weird stuff nothing that's panned out as exciting as you hope this would be most of the time when you talk to the authorities it's oh you guys are here okay it's not even like show us your credentials or anything it's they were expecting you all right then, so, uh, uh, then in that case august will just august will just like grab a buck and like just go straight to wherever the authorities are and be like hello we're here Yeah, so one of the the actual police officers is a uh, Officer Whittakey. And she's just kind of standing there looking out. She goes, can I help you? Wait, step back. Don't cross the uh, the tape, please. Tape. Uh, oh, this, this uh, tape? Uh, who, who do we normally, t- uh, who, who do we normally talk to? Show them the card. In, in this case. Uh, oh, we have some expertise in um, this kind of thing. Uh, we've investigated this thing uh, working with the police here in Chicago before. And uh, you can, if you want, you can call Officer uh, Fitzpatrick. And uh, August will show her ID. Uh, tell him uh, August and uh, Buck are here. She, you know, takes your ID, looks at it. It's very flimsy. It's almost like a business card, more of anything. Yeah. It's just laminated over. <laughs> it's laminated. <laughs> and not even like with an actual laminator, just yeah. like coated in, in cut it masking out. tape. Or yeah. Not that, <laughs> scotch tape. Just a couple layers. Exactly. Of Our tape. boss is really cheap. Oh my god. She hands it back to you. And she goes, "Oh, you're one of those. You're you're with that guy group. Okay. Yeah. Well." I mean, we could use all the help we can. Uh, we do have two others. Uh, a detective, a noir detective looking guy who I swear walks straight out of a film. And a barista. Because Hi, he has... I'm the barista. <laughs> Just got out of work, sorry. Misplaced my suit, you know? Dry cleaners. You still like, owes like, me whatever. coffee, God. Listen. So we're just gonna go then. Yes, and like grabs Buck and drags him in. Before you guys log off, she will explain that this is the fourth incident that they have had over the past couple weeks. And that every time that uh, parts or you know animal bodies have been found, they've always been it's always been found in some type of ritualistic manner. Uh, whether with sticks, you know, around it, candles have been seen. There have been, you know, semi altars made, uh, which is why their first thought was to, uh, you know, their their first suspect is this, you know, believers of Prego. Uh, Did you say Prego or like Prego. the sauce? Prego, like the sauce. Prego. Uh, Prego. Uh, Prego. Prego is much they, better sauce. They no make Prego, their they make their own pasta sauce with the um, with the blood of the animal sacrifices. No, I was just not. gonna ask you about that, Ed. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Just a yeah. small drop in every single jar. Yes, I swear to God, did it that, is, that is why uh, it is so nasty. Always get ready. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um. So, officer. I was wondering, is there any consistent uh, consistency about uh, the mutilations? Is a particular organ always missing, uh, or is it different things that are missing, or just? No, no I mean it's. I'm I'm no expert in in animal mutilations, but just from you know what my police training has given me that. It doesn't, our forensics, you know, don't show anything missing. It is more just, seems more ritualistic. Like, you know, like I said, there's altars and candles, sticks. It's like funny things written in the dirt. Back, back there right now. Yeah. Okay. There's one. That's why the whole area is all cordoned off. All right. I, I'd say we go look at that. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. So yeah, we, we go up and, uh, 
Do we have any gloves? Does anyone have any gloves? Uh, don't worry, I brought extra. Uh, she will uh, pull up the tape and allow you to, you know, walk past. As Buck passes, he asks just real quick. So they give you a primer on animal mutilation, or like, what's what's the deal with that? He kind of sneers at you, and then he passes. Uh, I thought it was a good question. I mean, August is uh, taking pictures. Uh. Uh, when we get back to my library, um, my ha- back to my haven, I can look in my in my books and see if I find anything that matches up. I, and I have references to look for. It's like yeah, taking like pictures of like the entire site around it. All right. Uh... First, uh, I want you to investigate a mystery. Roll me your 2d6 plus sharp. Investigate a mystery, 2d6 plus sharp. Uh, I got a 13. Uh... Anybody else? Uh... If oh, not, we can no all do deal. this. If, if, okay. not, if not, no big deal. All right, I, I got a. No, we'll I, I got a nine, and which means I get one hold, and I can ask one question. Yes. Uh, and then I think what I am going to. Oh man, I'm between two questions. I'm going to go with uh, what has been concealed here. So, based on what you see in this, you know, this little altar, you don't know the specifics, uh, but it's not just the mutilation that seems to go, be going on. The the drawings that are in the in the dirt and you know some of blood on on some of the trees. They don't just seem to be... They don't seem to be evil in nature. They seem to be more of like... Almost blessings and divinations and atonements. Uh, However, occasionally you do see a rare curse. This... This is... This is strange. These... Most of these are blessings. These are these 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 are most of these are blessings and there's only a few the occasional like ill will here. It's um I mean I would have to investigate more, but if I had to guess I would just just Based of what I've seen right here, I would say it could appear that maybe the blessings are here are here to uh, try and ward off the curses. Maybe. So the curses are they older than the other ones? No, they seem to be just as recent as the other ones. No. So we have one party trying to curse the area. Also, as I say, is it maybe there's protect the area? But we have they're some... just like dancing around here, killing ducks, and I mean, just some do... kind of a rap battle, or <laughs> <laughs> do both of the rituals require sacrifice? I mean, historically speaking, you there are many cultures where a sacrifice is required in order to secure a larger blessing. Sacrifice a cow for a good harvest for your entire family. Mm-hmm. Such is that nature. So sacrifice a duck. 
as right. Brock was saying, as Ed was saying, and well, spe specifically with these two, though, is it the blessing or is it the curse that is having the animal sacrifice, uh, or keeper? both? That is something that you cannot tell. I I I, I don't know. I would have to. No, I'm I'm taking. I'm, I'm making sure to take lots of pictures, and when we get back to my uh, my library, I can look at my books and uh, know what I'm looking for. Nice. Uh, I did roll an eight. If that helps. So if you rolled an eight, you should get to uh, ask one question of the. Uh, like, what happened here? What sort of creature was it? What can it do? What can it hurt? Where did um, it go? What's going on? Specifically with the curse, I want to know who or what was it that cursed this area? Well, it was definitely a person. And that's my one question, yeah? That is your one question. All right. Uh, okay. It's a person. Um, so based, I got, based on what you've seen, it's it doesn't seem to be like claw marks or anything. It is actually like somebody wrote it with some type of implement. Okay, so Sharpie. Ed got Ed got twelve on that, so he got to gets to hold two and gets to ask. Yeah, so you any get question two, two questions and any question. Okay, well let's start with one of my two. Where did it go? So looking around the area, you don't see any uh, significant tracks. You do see uh, a number of a number of tracks that are moving around the area. This is probably half police, half whoever had done this. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't seem that the animals were brought there willingly as it you don't see any tracks from the animals uh but the blood is fresh so it was done here they were they were slaughtered here okay so the, they were slaughtered here there are tracks around that are both police and probably whoever did this because we know that it's a person not necessarily a monster yes but we can't really tell where it went or who where they went after that yes there are there are multiple trails that move up and down through the preserves uh you could follow the tracks possibly and maybe find something further down the way but they go one goes to the east one goes to the south there are a couple of sets in either direction well i mean they they always say south go south is wrong, right? Like you're just going backwards when you go south. Yeah, I heard that somewhere. And we we do have four of us, so we could easily chew into it. It's true. Yes, we uh, should split up right here. That works. Yeah, that'll uh, work. Unequivocally. Yeah, yeah. 100% of the time. Absolutely. 110%. Yeah. Well, we won't go far. We'll make sure to stay within eyesight. I mean, yeah, and there's. I mean, if one of us does find a trail to a knife wielding maniac, we should definitely. Uh, follow it without telling the rest of the group. That that's a definitely. definitely. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. I'll, I'm I'm volunteer for the east. I'm gonna go east. Yeah, I'll I'll go with you. Yeah. I think. Yeah. So don't uh, you dare stab me, because I'm making fun of your coffee making skills. Don't you dare. John yeah, and yeah. Doc Johnson are gonna head off. In one direction. And August and Ed are going to go in the other. <laughs> okay, who is going to go which direction? I think they're going east, so we're going to go south. All right, so we'll start with the east. 
the East Gays. Uh, it's still, you know, it's still very bright. Uh, the forest pre preserves are a beautiful place. Trees, smells of flowers, a nice trail that leads down. You can follow the footsteps a, a good distance away from the main crime scene. Uh, I need both of you to roll. Uh, just roll me plus sharp. Plus sharp. Plus sharp. Plus sharp. Sharp. Ah. That's an eight. Thirteen. Okay. So yeah, as you guys keep keep moving down, uh, you begin to see some of the uh, you know the main facilities of the preserve. Yeah, you know, there's a couple of picnic tables. There's many well marked trails as you go down. You know, some nice interpretive signs. Even a couple of lodges where you know people can stay. Uh, the tracks continue on further and further and further. Uh, is there anything that you are specifically looking for as you guys are moving through? Looking for uh, blood or like tracks of the animals that came. Well, what kind of animals was it? Uh, based on what you could see, it was goats, dog, okay. goats, dogs. And uh, you know a plethora of pets. So fairly large. Those would have had to have been either brought in in cages or on leashes. So probably looking for tracks of goats and dogs, I guess. A couple of couple of chickens. At least the feathers were found. Yeah, feathers. Anything like that that would indicate that they, because we know that the animals were brought in to this location to be killed. So anything that would indicate that this was the way that they were brought in. Okay, so for Doc Johnson, you are you end up finding a uh, what seems to be a a blood trail as you as you. You know, move further down following the tracks. The tracks are, you know, very blatant. Uh, you do find a, a, you know, a couple trickles of blood, and you are going to get a plus one on your next roll to search this area. Yeah, uh, yeah. August is still taking pictures. Like, take, uh, will text, uh, Big and Doc, and tell them like what we found. With the blood. What did you, what did, you didn't find that. Oh, well, yeah. I'm sure Ed told me. Oh. <laughs> what? No, I didn't find that. Yeah. No, you guys haven't found anything yet. Doc oh. found that. Yeah. Oh, my Brit. My, I keep mixing you up. <laughs> Never mind. However, uh, Big Buck, you're able to, you know, keep your bearings. You don't get lost or anything as you kind of jump off the main path and, you know, come back. But uh, you kind of sense, like, I feel like something's following you. There's something I'd like to use here. I got an ability as the mundane called Oops. I would like to stumble across something important. Oh. You decide what, and it doesn't even have to be rel uh, relative to the immediate problem, but it's important and useful in some way. <laughs> Can, can it be a can, can you just like oh you stumble across a crowbar roll initiative <laughs> <laughs> no so you are uh yeah, you get that sense you feel like something's you, know, you look behind you you feel like something's following you 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 even stop you listen all you can hear are birds you know maybe a random chipmunk running through and you can see it so you know it's not the chipmunk that's following you hopefully but there's just something like you don't feel right as you're looking behind you and you're looking through that, you know, the, as the the forest gets deeper along the sides, something white just off to the side of the path catches your eye. You go over and pick it up and you see that it's a business card for the, uh, the bot Botanica de San Bermino. Huh. 
People have to stop littering. And he puts it in his pocket. Meanwhile, Doc's like on the ground. He's got one knee up, one knee down as he does. He looks at the blood trail, takes his fingers, dips it in, smells it. Relatively yeah. fresh. But what? Lick it. What? What? Ew. Gross. Lick it. What the? Pure, pure pressure. Ah. <laughs> ah, you gotta taste it. Yes, it seems to be relatively fresh. I don't know why I tasted that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure why you tasted it. It's dirty. I, out I here. don't. I really don't know why. <laughs> Seems like people a pandemic. People are garbage out here too. And he takes out that business card. Like, come on, you don't know where that blood has been. Wait, the. But the business card. Where is that? Been? Did you ever stop to think about it? No, no, I didn't. Do you want it? <laughs> Do you want to look at that? Sure. Why, yeah, why are you looking at blood? It. Wait a second. He, he reaches out with his blood the bloody covered hand. fingers, grabs a car. <laughs> why did I go with you? Get my coffee right next time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We'll hop over to the other group heading south. So you're. you're path is fairly similar however uh, as you start to move south the trees get much thicker much quicker uh, than the other path so you are in the you know a deeper part of the forest you still see you know picnic tables occasionally uh, you know those those nice workout stations every now and again you, as you guys are moving down the path following these steps a gentleman in a uh, in the forest preserve you know, like uniform is coming the other way. What time of day or night is it? Oh, this is like daytime. It okay. is like daytime. Okay. Picture. I just like well, I'm going to like subtly like kind of like take his picture. Okay. Uh, just like just in case, um, because you never know. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're, uh, I'm going to. I would like to roll, uh, to investigate this area if I can. Sure. Ed will attempt to, I guess, distract the park warden forest ranger whatever guy away from the weirdness that is occurring behind them by just striking up a conversation with him uh he'll flash his little id card he like looks at it and he's like never heard of you guys before we're uh we're pretty secretive oh about our activities. So We're what, only here because the traditional authorities aren't sure what to do in this situation. Uh, so you're here about the uh, that all that ritual stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we're trying to figure out what's going on with that. Uh, it's uh, got everybody a little bit baffled. I don't suppose you've seen or heard anything? Uh, well... No, not really. I mean, you do get the, you know, the occasional weirdo that, that walks through the, the the preserves every now and again. Nothing quite too crazy. I mean, have you, have you talked to the police about any of this? I mean, I'm sure that they have, you know, better recollection of what I do. Well, I have been working in this preserve for the past 36 years, though that's why we came finding came to find somebody like yourself oh. they don't know anything about this park you do so what can you tell me about the park I would like you to roll some charm oh god <laughs> uh, I rolled a 10 and 
meanwhile, like, because August can hear this conversation, they're just like, in the background, they're like, oh my god. So you rolled a 10? Mm-hmm. Oh, all right. So I rolled two sixes, which gives me an 11. Okay. So he starts going, he just starts going to town. He's like, oh, you need, you need to know stuff? I got you. And he starts spilling out about how this isn't the first time that this has happened. Like it happened oh. a long time ago and then it just kind of died out. Mm-hmm. And then it started back up again and then it died out again. Like this has been going on for, well, I don't know, 30 years probably. What's- I think he, What's the cycle? Uh, I mean, I, I don't, like I said, I don't know about that ritual stuff. I mean, you know, it, it happens for you know, a couple of weeks, and well, I mean, like, is it like every every five years, every three years? Oh, I, 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 I mean, I wish I could help you on the timeline. I just, I, I just don't know. I'm sure the, huh. the police would have. The, I mean people have filed reports that the police should have them well you know you would think that they would have made that connection and that they would have maybe passed that on to us but between you and me you know the people on the ground with their boots on the ground like you are the true heroes the ones that are really pushing this forward so, well, I mean, I guess the reason that they don't really care about it is, you know, the preserves are, they're huge. It's like 70,000 acres. So, you know, one of these, one of these happenings could happen way on the, you know, on the far reaches of, of one of the sides and they would never know about it. But I do. I do. And you know what? I've seen them. I have, you know what? Now that I think about it. I'd say about four years ago. Yeah, okay, yeah, four years ago, I started finding a bunch of like cardboard boxes and plastic sacks, you know, at the base of the trees, kind of like that. Look like tokens. Every now and again, I find, you know, that they were tied up in like some kind of cloth. And I reported it. You know, sometimes you get weirdos that just like to leave their, you know, they abandon their pets. So you know, I always take a look inside. If I find something I'm not supposed to, I definitely report it. I am, I'm a straight and narrow man. But uh, now that I can, you know, like I said, now that I come to think of it, I do remember there was a group of about five, maybe six of them. They were all dressed in white. I didn't really think anything of it because they were walking away. They weren't running. They weren't trying to hide. When was that? Oh, that was about uh, four years ago. It was right around the time where I started finding all that stuff. I'd say within that the, the next day or two. Uh, and where was that? Oh, that was... Uh, they call it the, the Wolf Wood. Yeah, the Wolf Woods. It's uh, straight to the west of here. It's like right in the middle of, of the preserves. All right. What's your name? My name is uh, Billy. Billy. All right, Billy. I'm Ed. It's a pleasure to meet you. Shake your hand. Very and strong. You have been, he'll return the thing, uh, the 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 shake with his own less than firmness because he's not exactly a scrapper. All right. Thank you very much. We'll let you get back to your uh, your rounds. I wouldn't really call them rounds. I'm just, I'm just a landscaper. Alrighty. Well, you've done a great job. Uh, August, for your uh, investigation of the area, you do find a weathered altar. Uh, this one is probably years, years, like years and years old. Uh, much of it has been washed away by time. But you do see a couple of feathers. 
uh, most of the writing, actually almost all of the writing, is gone. The only thing that caught your eye was when Billy was speaking about the red and white strips. There are still some of those smudged into the dirt. Underneath uh, the... Uh, this one looks specifically of carvings in the tree, not blood. Uh, and I get two questions. Yeah, you get two questions. All right. Um, I'm going to go with uh, uh, what was it going to do? And uh, what uh, and I- I'm going to uh, like what was what was it going to do and uh. What was what going to do? Uh, maybe that's not a good question. Um, like, like the, like, if I can figure out, like, you know, kind of like what, because like the other altars, I could see like some were like blessings and curses. Like, like what was, like maybe like what's being concealed here and. Not as much being concealed, but based off of what you've seen uh at the last site and then seeing the writings in the tree and the strips uh this is more of wording as if wording from evil all right all right and That's one question. I think uh, I'm. I think I'm gonna hold my other one. If I can. Okay. Uh, Ed, this is a ward. Well, yeah, that's what trees are made of. No, I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna show him like the altar. This is an oh, old one. Not wood, ward. Got it. Ward. Wood, ward. Yeah, okay. So a warding wood. Look, another altar. Did you hear what he said? Yes, I did. This- so this, this must one, be one of those other yeah, spots. Yeah. This one is a ward against evil. Well, wasn't that kind of what the last one was? Well, yes, that one also had some curses. This one is similar, but it's not the same. So maybe they are trying to curse whatever is infiltrating the wood? Uh, Let's go back and check with the other guys. Yes. Uh, just a question, Ed. Mm. Uh, how how is Philip? Your dad? Well, not you know. You don't know this. Oh, I don't know this yet. That's right. <laughs> Philip. Who? Who's Philip? Isn't that your your brother? Oh. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, how is he? I uh, don't know. I haven't talked to him in years. Oh. Never mind. This, then. Uh, this lifestyle doesn't exactly lend itself to family real well. Funny. Uh.
And yeah, we we walk and we go, you know, meet the other two. Okay. So as August and uh, Ed are making their way back, what is uh, Big and Doc Johnson do? Uh, it seems like it might be important to head on back. Wipes his blood off his fingers on his trench coat. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we should follow the blood. And now with that, he just turns around and starts walking back. Just not even going to let him answer that. With like a, yeah, let's follow the blood. He's just going to go. Like in, the, in the direction the game, yeah. of the blood? <laughs> no, he, he's going back to where they came from. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Smart ass. So you guys, uh, you can all meet up. Can't get coffee for right now. <laughs> kind of in the general area where you got, uh, you know, divided, <laughs> divided forces. And you see that the, uh, the officer in charge, uh, Whitaky, comes up. She's like, so what have you guys found? Uh, I found a business card. But it may or may not like some of the lettering may or may not be streaked with blood now. Um, and uh, found a blood trail down the way. What kind of blood? Uh, what kind of a question is that? I, what kind yeah, of blood? I mean, well, was it the animal blood? No, because we have a whole lot of it here. I don't, I don't know. Do you want to take a look at the blood? We have some blood right here. Like pointing to Doc's trench coat. Like, what, look at them. I mean, I can't t- Like, blood. Okay. All We're animals bleed red. Jesus. Yeah. I don't have a chemist set on me. She calls for one of her forensic people to come get, like, a sample off your finger. Uh, the trench coat. The... So, what what was your name again, officer? It's Whitaky, Officer Whitaky. First name's Catherine. Officer Whitaky. Yes. Oh, okay. So, were you aware Whitaki. that this is not the first time that animal sacrifices have happened within this preserve? There has been talk about it, but nothing substantial. We ran into uh, somebody that works in the preserve, and he says it's been happening off and on for 30 years. 30 years. I mean, that very well may be the case. A lot of this stuff, you know, especially in this area, you know, there's people that say that there's you know, yetis or grassmen in these preserves. Some people say that aliens are doing these, you know, mutilations. It's it's hard to cut through the BS, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I believe there's aliens here when Pepsi trucks get full, filled with weapons. In the past, I, I, I will be honest, in the past, most of what we found could easily be easily be explained as you know a natural death of of an animal you know a, a rabbit carcass is found a deer carcass is found a skunk i mean who goes out and kills a skunk exterminators i mean it's only recently where we're starting to find you know domesticated animals yes. I mean, I mean, people who don't like the smell of skunk, I suppose. I mean, uh, Doc Johnson, give me, uh, give me charm, charm, charm. Uh, roll high. That's a six. Oh, please. Did one of us put like actual points in charm? <laughs> I, did. I have one point in charm. Because I sure as hell didn't. 
Uh, neither did I. It might be a family trait. <laughs> <laughs> I got charm too. Oh, I'll be handling go. the talking oh. from here it's on in. Apparently, yes. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the weird covered. I've got the sharp. <laughs> She looks at the doctor and she's like, you said you found something while you were investigating. Why, why do you say that with air quotes? That just sounds rude. Did you find anything? Investigating? Yes. Oh, wow. Found, found, found blood in a business card. Show, show the business I, card. I, I showed the business yeah. card. You showed the business card? Yeah. yeah. I showed the business card, obviously. <laughs> To keep her, what does the business card so say? She, she yeah. grabs it, and it is for the Botanica. Yeah. She looks at it, she goes, oh, I know this place. Yeah, it's on the south side. It's uh, owned by uh, a Gabriella Cruz, I believe. It's supposed to be an herbal shop. I've bought tea once there. Was it good? It was. It was very good. Better than large marches? Absolutely not. That's what I like to hear. Yeah, nobody fucks at Large March. Oh. Alright, so uh, we found blood down that way. Shall we? Uh, let's go take another look. I, I guess. Alright. Right. Right. Why do you say? Why do you? Why do you say it like that? It's what so, do you want me like, to be? Ooh, blood? No. What? Show some goddamn enthusiasm, some love for your job. Oh, wait, this ain't your job. Shit. This is one of my jobs. What, you get paid? I think. Fuck. I'm pretty sure I do. Just been out here doing this fucking pro bono. This bullshit. All right. Yay, blood. Let's go. You guys are gonna go back down and look at the blood again. Well, I think we're oh, gonna assuming go it was a trail, past, right? past that and see if there's a blood trail. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If... So you guys head down to the last place that Doc and Big were at when they found the blood. Yes. Yeah. And uh, you don't see, it's kind of pooled a little bit where Doc had found it, but it doesn't seem to be going, like you can't find any. Anymore if we kind of go uh, like, like in a circle, getting wider around it. No, you don't, you don't see anything. Mm, could have sworn there was a trail. I guess that's a, my fault. Should have uh, ventured under the breach. Uh, all right, so we're going to this uh, botanical sanctum. Yeah, are we? Uh, well, actually, since we're up here, I think we should go check out the wolf wood, which is where four years ago the uh, the guy that works here saw some figures in white robes. Maybe right. if we see it's going to take you a site. couple hours to walk there. Oh, I thought we could maybe drive. I'll get my. You bike. could drive. Yeah, yeah you'd have to go like oh, right, it's like on the other side of the preserves. Like I said, this is like a seventy thousand acre preserve. Yeah. So. Uh, how long would it take us to drive there? At least an hour. I mean. And how long would it take us to drive to the tea shop? Probably about the same amount of time. It's on the south side. So, uh, I mean, it August, works so well the 30 first or, time. Thirty or forirty minutes, depending on traffic. Uh, yeah, August will pull out their phone and will Google Maps from the tea shop to the Wolfwood. You're going to Google Maps from the tea shop to the Wolfwood? Yeah. Okay. Uh, just, uh, and, like, try to figure out, like, which one, like, you know, drive there 
like how long like which one would we hit first? which one would we hit first they're in complete opposite directions the opposite directions all right well, I, I mean, said, I the, have. The Canica is on the south side, and the place where the the Wolfwood is is in the far northeast corner of the preserve. I mean, I haven't had my coffee today, so um, tea sounds great. Let's go. Let's go get some tea. I will. No, cut. Buck. I didn't actually ask for coffee today, though. Appreciate you thinking about me. Thanks a lot. not my job to bring you coffee when you don't ask for coffee. It's also... Are you my assistant? <laughs> Am I? I don't even know what I do here. That, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure... More support. Yeah. Yay, team. More support and coffee bringer. Alright, well, let's go to this Botanica place, then. Since that I'm being outvoted here. I feel like the I feel like I should mention that I found the the card as litter. I feel like that's very important. It just kind of jumped out at me. I don't know. It, it's clearly important. It has blood on it. Look at right there. That's from your hand, though. Wait, uh, shit! It is. Cut. I mean, that's your fingerprint, right? You know what my fingerprint looks like. Okay, now I'm terrified. Stop throwing balls! Is that to us? Or? I think that was to the kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I thought it would be funny in character. <laughs> it is. Oh. Wait, right. who, who, wait, who's throwing balls? <laughs> Back, to the... Back to the game. Back to the van. Sorry. I Back just to the van. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so you guys are going to head where? That tea shop. The Botanica. Uh, the Botanica. 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 All right, so you guys head back up into the not mystery mobile and head to the south side of Chicago. On the and way. You arrive uh, on the way. On the way there, I, I, I look over. We definitely need a name for the car. I mean, there's been the mystery machine. This can be the, uh, the Meowsworth. Marvelous machine. Meowsworth. I like I like that. Um, the haunted Pegasus. I like I like that as well. But that's not a Pegasus. It's a unicorn. Unicorn. Oh uh, well, we need uh, atta- we need to attach some wings up forthwith. Why don't we just call it the unicorn? Uh, no. Uh, the, the unicorn. Hmm. Uh. It is kind of fabulous. What what uh, what if we call it? Um, what if we call it? And it's not it's not nearly as fun as you know the unicorn or Mister Meowsworth or any of that such. But what if uh, we call it uh, the Barney Mobile? Barney Mobile. Hmm. What what about the machine of? Uh, perpendicular inquiry. Why don't we just call it the van? Yeah. It's so much easier to say. While you guys are contemplating on what you're going to call your van, uh, you hear more news uh, coming through the radio that uh, they have brought in a couple of suspects. Uh, that have been attached to the believers of Prego. And they have been brought in for the charges of the mutilations. Uh, although there are no witnesses, they have been known to you know, do ritual type sacrifices in their beliefs. So they are they have been brought in for questioning. There is a, a huge uproar in the community that they're only doing this because of their religious beliefs, not because they actually did it. And then you guys arrive at the Botanica. It's a nice little corner shop. You guys walk inside, nice bell goes off. 
old style, you know, a little ding, ding, ding. And uh, when you get in there, it's this place is just filled envelopes full of dried herbs, arrangements of teapots, strainers, vaporizers, candles, silhouettes of saints, charms, calendars, those strange frog things where if you like you push down on the butt, they jump. Mm-hmm. Boink. And uh, you see a lady standing behind the counter. She looks to be reading a uh, a book about flowers. Run, nudge, buck. Yeah, you you found the card. Yeah, go go talk to her. But I'm, okay. I, I'm yeah, really fucking yeah. bad at it. I'm really, really fucking bad. Oh at no, it. yeah, I noticed. Yeah, and he's taking off his little like Pfizer thing, and his apron. Yeah, uh, that, that, yeah. Leave the apron. I'll, I'll hold out of the apron here for you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. She hears you guys shuffle in. She. <laughs> You know, puts her book down, and then you can get a good, you know, a good look at her. She's definitely an, an older Hispanic woman. Uh, nice white head scarf, big glasses, huge smile, like she's excited. She's like, "Oh, welcome," and says that. Sorry. <laughs> she's obviously a cultist. <laughs> I am. Oh my god. Okay. Um. Apologize, and I hope. I hope this one shot wasn't going for too serious a vibe. I'll be <laughs> honest, because not only my personality killed that right from the get go, my daughter did as well, and I apologize for that. <laughs> yeah, she's like, how can I? How can I help you guys today? Can I interest you in this this nice diffuser? She like <laughs> like points her hand over. Is there anything specific you guys are looking for? Yes, I have a, uh, a three-year-old child that I need to calm the fuck down. <laughs> so want to stay incense for that? <laughs> want to stay with my minus one to sharp, just cultists? Do you just want to say like well. cultists? <laughs> 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 I'm looking for something, something strange. What's the strangest thing you got? Boink, boink. Uh, roll charm. Yeah. The strangest thing they've got here. That's an eleven. So she she like puts her hand on her on her chin. She's got a couple of like little wispies. Yeah, she's older. She goes, hmm. She goes uh, through a curtain in the back. She picks something up. She comes walking back out with it. And she goes, here. And she puts down a jar. And it's got what could only be described as like some bat wings. Like dried, dried bat wings in a jar like jerky yeah this is strange uh yeah pretty strange yeah uh ask her about the card you if you don't mind me asking do you do you get any strange clientele well i mean honestly you're the strangest one that's walked in today She's got a jar of bat wings in the back of her place. Of course she's got strange people coming in here. And it says a lot that we're the weirdest today. <laughs> T- today? I mean, what do you mean? I mean, what do you mean by weird people? I look kind of normal, I think. Like someone who walks in and asks for the weirdest thing? Yes, I do. I'm... He's standing right in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> so have you, have you heard on the radio about the... Uh, the animal sacrifices yeah. up on the north end. Of course I've heard about those. We have been brought in to help investigate what is occurring there. In the course of that investigation, we found your business card near that site and hmm. also near a pool of blood. Pool of blood, you say? Mm-hmm. Yes, I... Uh couldn't tell what the blood was for but uh I mean yeah, that yeah. Right. 
from. Excuse me. That is. Obviously, it was for carrying oxygen throughout the body. From, I couldn't tell, human or animal. Uh, also, tell me exactly where you were yesterday. No? Okay. Right, yesterday? No, no, don't mind me. I'm He's dramatic. having brain yeah. lapses. Yeah. Well, I mean, the fact that you found this next to a pool of blood, this is very serious indeed. Have you brought this up with the police? Yes, we have, but... We are the police. <laughs> no, we're not. We are super not the police. Now, in regards to your question, sir, she looks at Doc. She's like, if you really must know where I was yesterday, I was at a meeting. I have many people who can confirm that. Hmm. Was it, uh... So you weren't out doing blood sacrifices? Well, not in the woods, no. So you were doing sacrifice. <laughs> not in the woods. But it wasn't in the woods. Where was your sacrifice? I take it that you have no idea what the, the believers of Prego are about. Uh, I myself am an advocate of this community. I think well, it is horrible the way that they are being slandered in the media nowadays. I agree. That's I why we think, got to add on the truth. Yeah, I think if you could uh, maybe fill us in a little bit more on what your religion entails, that would help us greatly. I mean, if roll charm. Oh god! At negative two. <laughs> at negative two because John's an asshole. Uh, five. I have, I have Betty, I have five. Five. <laughs> so I gain an experience. Yes, if if only. <laughs> So she, she goes, well, I mean, I can give you the lowdown of it. I can't go. Yeah, we would take forever. But I'm, I'm guessing that you want specifics. Why don't you just ask me this? I, I know what you want. I know what you want. You want to know if we're responsible for all this. Um, actually, no. We're we actually come to that sure you're not. Yeah. Oh. We, but if we, you could put it this way, we d we don't believe that you are responsible for this. Cool, you're the first person. Thank God. So anything that you could tell us about your religion that would help us prove that that is correct. And also, um, just why was your card in that neck of the woods? Well, it was probably dropped by another fellow member of the community. And you must understand that the believers of, of Prego, we, we go out and we look for these people who are doing these, you know, these vicious animal killings. And we do go, you know, we do patrol the streets. Think of us as a spiritual night watch. The Justice Ghost League. Watch. Oh yeah, the Justice League. That sounds kind of similar to what we do. Oh. In that we go out and we hunt down those things that go bump in the night. Now, from what we have seen, you know, from what I have been told within the community, I'm I am merely an advocate. I am not in the inner circle or anything. But whoever has been doing this has been doing this for some time. That yeah. uh, seems to be true. confirmed by what we have found. Uh, I don't I, suppose I, I, you could give us the name of somebody within the, that inner circle that would talk to us? Um, I, to be honest, I doubt anyone would. I, I do have a, a question. Yes. Um, maybe you could help me. Uh, so uh, August will uh, pull out her phone and uh, she'll show... Uh, what, what was her name? Gabriella. Uh, she'll show uh, Gabriella pictures of like the initial, the 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 uh, sacrifice inside that we're investigating. Okay. And uh, say so. Uh, some of these mockings uh, are the a blessing and a curse. And then some of them, there's some of them that are 
few of them that are curses. They're about the same age. And a little while away, we found one that was broken down and appears to be one for a war for a ward. Um, do you would you be able to know it tell if this particular altar was for meant for the curse or the blessing? She looks at the pictures and she kind of zooms in a little bit and zooms out. She's like, well, I don't know what kind of investigators you are, but you're not catching all of these signs. But you look right there and she kind of points. And what you guys thought were just like twigs was really different herbs tied up in different bundles. She goes, see that that right there is that's foxglove and and that's velvet leaf. Which I have here. Actually, probably most of this stuff is from here. These are probably the words that the community has put up in hopes of stopping whoever has been doing this. So this sacrifice was done as a war to. Oh, the sacrifice! I can tell you right now. The with the way the brutality of this. Looking at the picture, this was not anyone in my community. All right, so the initial sacrifice is the curse, and the community came, perhaps came, and tried to ward against it. Yes, and if a sacrifice was made, I can guarantee you that the body would not have been left there. Yes. You- do the followers or the believers of Prego wear white robes when they practice? Uh, I don't believe that I've seen any, but again, I am merely an advocate. I am not in the inner circle. Nope, understandable. Just wasn't sure if you knew what their uh, uniform was. Uh, this is just coming from a layman. It's kind of, uh, I have no idea what's going on here, uh, but like this curse is very cursy, but other than cursing this point of ground, what is it supposed to be for? The curse? Yeah. Do you know? Oh, I do not know. And even if I do know it, it is, it is very dark. It's something that I would not say openly, even if I did know. Um, this so is, is it possible that evil. the bundle was there first it may have been or someone may have come after and tried to cleanse it okay i cannot be certain do you perhaps know uh who might else be able to help us no someone else we can reach out to um, in regards to the investigation uh, yes ma'am I mean uh, the police well, well yes you know the police obviously you know we, we you know we, we've worked with we're, we're working with the police but I meant more specifically perhaps someone within the community with, within your faith I mean if if it's the faith that you that you wish to know about, I guess you could speak with uh, oh the, the nice gentleman from the university. Uh, she like grabs a phone book. That Craig Sullivan. Yes, yes. It's a very nice, very nice gentleman. And I believe that he's studied Prego as part of his research. So he is, he's very well versed, maybe not in the specifics, but in a general manner. I think that's a wonderful idea. Thank you very much for your time and assistance, uh, Ms. Cruz. Oh, but you are very welcome. And I'm, I'm glad that finally someone has stopped pointing the finger and is really wanting to get to the bottom of this. People like to blame things they don't understand. It's right about this time, Doc, that you get a a uh, a beep on your pager. 
but it's a nice pager. Uh, of course, Doc has a pager. <laughs> <laughs> well, I you pull get... it up, and it's that you know, it's it's one of those ones where the button has been used so often, you really have to like dig in to get it to click. And yeah. so he doesn't understand that you just have to like click it, but it now it's just like this pressure activated button. So he's like, yeah, but I mean, it's, you know, we're, we're in the day and age, so it's, it's nicer. It was given to you by the agency. And uh, you see that there is a all points bulletin out uh, that Officer uh, Whittakey has gone missing while investigating the surrounding area. They have not heard from her in the past hour. Officer Whittakey has gone missing. Um, that's who we do, were just talking of, to. Do any? Yes. Do and I'm gonna turn back to the owner. Do any of uh, these curses use human sacrifice? Not that I know of. It's a little dark. I I'll admit, but maybe she just stumbled into the wrong thing. <laughs> We were just talking to her, so she couldn't have left. She had to have and, been inquiring as to the surrounding area of the investigation site. And not only that, it took us about almost an hour to get here, plus you know, the time we spent talking to Miss Cruz. So she you know, had to have taken almost immediately after we left. Exactly. So they had to have been pretty close by. Does that mean we're next? Wait. Who knows? But in the deepness of the woods, you you don't see this, but it is that beautiful cinematic chase of Officer Whittakey running through the woods, panting, continually looking back. You know, branches scraping her face. She turns around and like caps off a couple of rounds and uh, she hears a roar from behind her she turns and stops fires a couple more rounds and then she just stops and looks around and then in that that beautiful horror scene she turns around very slowly as there's a crack of a stick behind her and then she is sweeped off her feet and like moves away from sight. And that's where we'll take our break. <laughs> yes. Wonderful. Officer Whitaky disappears. Uh, uh, I think it's pronounced what a key. Yeah, what a key. I'm a key. It is 9:34 Eastern Time. We're gonna take a 10 minute break. That'll put us at 9:44 Eastern Time. But stick around. It's only going to get more spooky. Hopefully. I don't know. This has been getting kind of crazy. Spooky. We shall see. Stick around, everyone. We'll see you when we come back.
All right, everyone, we are back to continue our investigation into these mutilations that have been going on in the Glen Oak Preserve in northern Chicago. So, like you said, right before the end, you had the, uh, the text beeper message. But there was a that uh, Officer Whitakey had gone missing. And that there was a uh, like an ongoing search for her. Now, the preserves are very large, as uh, Billy had told you earlier, and a lot of hours go by as the search goes on and on and on. And right around sunset. You know, getting into the later day, probably you know five, six in the afternoon. She is found in the middle of the preserve, in one of the deepest parts of the woods, badly injured and in a coma. She is taken to the nearest hospital. We should go talk to her. She's in a coma. Uh, yeah, we can't. No. Even then, it'd be kind of bad taste. Let's be fair. All right. Well, I've let's asked, go talk to this Craig Sullivan then. I've asked many questions. Even I wouldn't ask that. You won't ask what happened. That's a person lying on a fucking deathbed in a in a hospital unit. No, that sounds horrible. It's incredibly insensitive. I mean, you gotta find out what happened to him. Just go. Kind of your job. You look with your eye holes and you figure it out. Uh, Edward. That's why you don't get paid. Can you roll me a. Uh, or actually just call out high or low? Um, low? So what are you guys going to do now? Some time has passed. You were helping out with the, uh, the search. search. You were All not right. the ones that found her. Uh, I say we go talk to Dr. Craig Sullivan, see what we can find out about the followers of, uh, of uh, tomato sauce. All right. So Ed, if you guys head over to Northwest University, you can easily find uh Dr. Sullivan. He is a theology professor. And he has studied the, the Prego as part of his research. Uh, oh, you see no. a very frail elderly white man. Very almost gaunt. You know, thinning wispy white hair. Horn rim glasses. You can tell that he spends most of his most of his living life in a library rather than outside. What would would you like to ask, talk to him about? um, What can you tell us about the ritualistic sacrifice practices of the followers of Prego. Oh, wow, that's very... Actually, I'm sorry. <clears throat> oh, wow, that's very, very precise. Mm. If I remember correctly, and I always remember correctly, the Prego sacrifices are they are very strict and very respectful. Prayers have to be said, and the blade has to be a certain style and sharpness. And I, I, I think I've said this once before today. That it, it is very, it's a very humane killing. You know, much, much more humane than, than you would find in a slaughterhouse. So definitely not like these recent things that oh, that oh preposterous if we were to 
to show you some photos, could you maybe tell us what you think of them? I will. I. I. I, <clears throat> I will do my best. August, why don't you show them those pictures you took earlier? So you're going to show them, show them the pictures from your phone? I will take your silence as a yes. Yes. <laughs> so he, uh, he flips through them, you know, one at a time. A couple of them he turns over. He says, well, I'm, I'm not quite sure what I'm looking at, but this is definitely... With 100% certainty, he slams his hand down on the desk, that this is not, this is not of the people of Brego. Not. Ah. This is. Uh, we were hoping for a little bit more about the curse, actually. Uh, who might practice it, where they might be, it's kind of, sort of that. Uh, Curses. I know, I know, I know the, uh, the order of Ragu is very uh, esteemed. Um, and uh, yeah, he's very, very forthright in their killings of small animals that may or may not be pets. Um, so, if well, we could... yeah, August here uh, took these pictures, and they said that this stuff here is like a curse, and this stuff is a blessing. So, do you know what these? Like, do you know of a way that these tie together or why they would be combined with what we've been told over here is a bundle of stuff that the Prego people do? He, he grabs a book hey, off of his shelf behind his desk and he puts it down and he does some flipping through it. You see some similar markings in the book that match up with the markings uh, at the altars. He says, mm, yes, yes. Okay. So I believe that... And he points to half of, like, half of the scene. He's like, this... This is bad. I do not know who did this. However, this... And he points to some of the, the herbs. Those, those... Uh, you know bundled twi twine bundles of of herbs and incenses all the things that uh gabriella yeah that gabriella had listed off these are wardings this is a way to cleanse evil i do not understand what type of evil they're trying to cleanse but yes Oh. Okay. He will, uh, you know, he'll continue to go on more and more about, you know, the th uh, theoretical details. Do you know anyone who is actually, you know, in this church that we could talk to? They tend to keep their affiliation very quiet. As you know, you could probably understand their practices. They seem odd to some people. I believe that a uh, Miss Miss Cruz is a, a a strong advocate for the group. I've spoke with her on more than one occasion. Yes, yeah, she said that she was an advocate, but not a practicing member. Yes, like I said, they, they tend to keep to themselves. Uh, do you know if uh, this officer Wadiki, uh, if she had any ties to any of these activities? You mean the lead investigator of these heinous crimes that have yes. been ongoing? 
Yeah. Wait, are you asking me if she was involved? Well, I know she was investigating these uh, killings, but uh, I was wondering if uh, there's anything more to the puzzle other than just that. Well, hi, what I know. Maybe she was a friend to the Raku, pra Prego, Prego. Uh, re religion? I, I don't believe that she is a practitioner. Do they wear white robes? They do. They do. And he pulls that, he, he flips through some more pages and you see that it is, it is almost, uh, like almost childishy, like what you would, when you were a kid, you would, you know, cut holes in a sheet and look like a ghost. It's very simple. It's like one piece that just hangs down. So that kind of confirms what Billy was saying that maybe these guys have been doing this for a while, but something more sinister has moved in of late. It almost, I, I have a theory. It's a good theory. We'll be the judge of that. Is pretty good. Just, you know, it's good. You keep saying that, but it's a good theory. Don't worry about it. It's fine. This is coming from the same guy that licked blood. Mm. I was you guys scared. are continuing your conversation with the doctor. So we are <clears throat> moving on from that. Um, are we going to investigate? Area was it south. Those hooded, robed figures. Those will soon to be alkylite of the uh, ragu. Well, here's what I would like to do right now. Jesus. Um, Dwayne, I had those three that I had held at the beginning. I'd like to use one of those. Okay. And I would like to ask, is this person connected to current events more than they are saying? No, he is not. Okay. He is merely, merely a mild-mannered professor. Then I think that what Doc was saying might be a good next move would be to go and investigate the site where um, Officer... Whitaki was uh, found. Okay. So you guys take off from the college. Uh, you're able to make it back to the preserve. You could take some of the uh, the side, like the service roads that go through that that you know Billy or some other park ranger would use. Uh, but you can only get so close to where uh, Officer Whitaky's body was found. And it takes you about another 30 minutes from the side road to get to like the deep part of the forest where she was at, which is not uh, the Wolf Woods, but just on the outskirts. Okay. Like that one section, that, that 100 acre section that is the Wolf Woods. And pretty much what you see is that they, again, there is, uh, there's only one officer there and the area is kind of taped off. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, trees in the way, so there's no real definitive line. Right. I'd like to actually go and check out and see if I find a path. The fact that they were kind of charging through the forest should mean that it's a little bit more obvious. Um, and just try and see if I can't like find any clues as to you know who was chasing Whitaky. 
how big they were, stuff like that. Okay, roll me sharp. Investigate the area. I would also like to investigate the area. I'm assuming that we're all Touch. doing that. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to investigate the area, tell me exactly what you're looking for. I already know what uh, Doc's looking for. Uh, I'm looking for more uh, cult signs, uh, more more uh, altars, things of the like. Okay. And uh, I rolled an eight. Okay, so Ed is going to be more, um, he'll be more interested in what actually happened to uh, Whittakey. So he'll be more looking for where she was found and wanting to try to piece together what happened specifically to her. Okay, so yeah, go ahead and roll your sharp as well for Doc. Uh, so just looking around the area and based on your role, you can see that she was heading, uh, you can see like footprints of where she was running. Uh, and they, they obviously do end a little bit before where she was found about 30 or 40 feet away or where the footprints stop and then where drag marks begin as if she was drug so do i find a secondary set of footprints or anything unusual there are uh it's something that you've never seen before it it looks like an animal print and based on the gate uh it, it was definitely running so you're not sure whether it was running after her or away from her the prints like the direction of the it, you can tell that they do have it, it does have some type of claw maybe a mountain lion maybe who knows uh, but even though the gate seems that it was running the imprint in the dirt and mud is very shallow it's like it has no weight very little weight that is weird well, uh, and I'll, I'll point this out to the rest of them when they're done doing their thing. August, what did you roll? I rolled an eight. Uh, based on what I have told Doc, is there anything that you want to ask, or do you just want general information? Uh, I, I'm going to go with my uh, old favorite and say uh oh what is being concealed here nothing there's nothing nothing trying to be hidden now for ed what did you roll again 12. Roll to 12. So the officer sees that you're kind of like looking around and uh, he recognizes you probably based on what <clears throat> Whittakey had explained to the rest of the investigative force who you were. So he immediately recognizes the group of you. And he, uh, he points to like a you can tell that there's like a, a smashed down patch of, you know, a couple of, uh, you know, broken branches, mud, uh, some moss. It's all been packed down. And he's like, she, she was found right there. She was in pretty bad shape. And then he would be able to see the, the drag marks that Doc had pointed out. Right. So she got taken down back there, drug over here, and left here. So his question is going to be, why was she moved? 
So he's going to try to look around and determine if there's something special about this spot that she would have been put here for a reason. You know, why would they knock her down or, you know, she fell or dropped or did something over there? Why did they then drag her over here instead of leaving her over there? So he's going to be kind of looking around here and then looking around there to try and see if it's like, okay, well, you, there you can, there's a cabin over there that can see this spot or something like that. So based on what you can see on the scene, the officer will go on to tell you that, but yeah, from what we can tell, uh, yeah, obviously she hasn't been able to speak. She was in a coma when she left. I'm not sure what her situation is now, but it, from the the wounds on her body, it looked like she was taken down from behind. And then it, it almost looks like some animal had like bit onto her, her, her leg and started dragging her and was heading towards the, the wolfwood. And then dropped her here and left her there. Yeah, it's very, very strange. Okay. Muted book. So, um, one of my held twos is mm -hmm. going to be, um, what sort of creature is it? So you get to know right away. <clears throat> So based on your past the footprints uh, and yeah, the footprints that you found, the past experience that you've had uh, with the weird and obscure, you remember a, a clipping that you have saved in your strange cryptid, uh, you know, your strange cryptid folder in your conspiracy file yeah uh that talks about chupacabras chupacabra El chupacabra however in your you know as you, you've like delved deep into it you're like oh this is a hoax or you know chupacabras are really the government you know experiments uh you've learned Obviously. that chupacabra the word that is used by the by like religious entities is not you know like this blood sucking dog that that many people think it is it is a shadowy ghostly entity often brought upon through dark ritual okay and uh, what can hurt it? You know that they are ex extremely vulner vulnerable in daylight. Uh, while you are not a practitioner yourself, you have heard, since they are the product of a dark ritual, that magic can make them go away as they are not earthly beings and they don't like to be in enclosed areas all we gotta do is hold out for daylight well it looks like whatever it was, which I'm guessing it's a chupacabra, was dragging her towards the wolfwood. So I think that the wolfwood should be our next stop. A chupacabra? That's so fascinating. That means uh, normally, you know... According to the law, they they tend to, you know, drink the blood of goats. That's what they want you to think. The truth is, the real, true, non 
Illuminati tainted truth <laughs> is that they're actually spirits that can be summoned by dark rituals, just like we saw earlier. So I think the Ragu people have been trying to ward these woods against the lizard people and the chupacabra and now there's somebody else that's messing with those wards to bring about the new world order right so yeah. we just gotta look, we just gotta look for anyone who's eating like steak tartar and in the wolf woods yes just gotta keep our eyes open to the bigger pattern. Yeah. Uh, all right, Uncle Ed. All right. B bigger, bigger pattern. So, just like keep a lot of moving pieces. A lot of moving pieces. A lot of moving pieces. A um, lot of alphabet soup agencies. Oh. So the, the FBI, the NSA, the CIA. Oh, and the don't FWA. say their names. That's how you get their attention. Well, the people starts looking towards the, the DMA, sky for the satellite. DCI. Yeah, I understand. RNA, VGA, satellites, the net, DMV. the web, the man, <laughs> just straight the up man. the man. Yeah, man. <laughs> Uncle Sam. Keeping us down. You know, municipal association of. I really, I would really yeah, appreciate it if you guys would take me serious every once in a while, and Ed will just stalk off. <laughs> oh, wait. oh, M sixteen, M I six, I six. Are there certain numbers in alphabet soup? I'm British. <laughs> Do they put numbers in your soup? Yes. Yes, obviously. Why would you? Know? You didn't know? No, I really, I really didn't. Yeah, right. they're, they're, it's uh, it's incredible. That's why they're kicking our butt as far as the education system goes. All right, uh... it's not alphabet soup over there. It's metric soup. Come on, get with it. <laughs> so, what are you guys gonna do now? If you have a little bit more of the picture, the pieces are falling into place. So let's go hunt down a scary dog-like creature in a woods that is supposedly wispy. And made from the quote unquote man. Holy hell. Let's go investigate, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Things won't kill you, they said. I don't think anybody said that. Uh, That's what I was told. Also, are you getting paid, Edward? What? Hey, I mean, they, they let me crash in a dumpster behind the office. Uh, I'm getting, how I feel. I, I'm getting oh, paid. Fuck, are you serious? Get, fuck you and fuck Buck. God damn it. Don't you get uh, some kind of consulting fee? No, I've been doing this pro bono. This bullshit. You need a better agent, man. It, uh, I have my own agent. Shit. <laughs> if you if you two want, uh, I have a three-bedroom apartment. You guys can move in. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm cool with that. I I haven't been sleeping in my car. And you know, I trench coat, washing my clothes in the river. I I I insist you move in. Oh my god, please! I, and I cannot. Can we let... can, can we find this chupacabra first? Oh, we're we're walking yeah. and talking. <laughs> so you guys are gonna walk to talk. You're like walking and talking at the same time? Dude. Yeah. <laughs> it is a strange phenomenon walking. So and the, talking. The, <laughs> you know, as you guys are talking and you know, Ed's talking about chupacabras and conspiracies and the man and satellites and chips and dip and the net, and the web. The officer is listening. He's kind of taking it all in and looking at you guys really weird as if he has no idea why you're here, even though he knows 
but thinks that you're imposters probably. But he points you in the general direction of the edge of the wolf wood if you do want to know. Yeah. Gotta be careful with that edge. <laughs> uh, crack myself up. It takes some time because the uh, you know the forest is thick. There's no proper trail. I mean, we're we're walking and talking, um, but like, also Doc is just going to be aware of the surroundings, and hopefully we can uh, stick to the trail that uh, the good police officer followed. What what a key, what a key. As you get closer to what is considered like the edge, you know, like the edge of the reserve proper to the you know, the line of the wolfwood, uh, you need to roll sharp. Uh, all of us are just stuck. Anybody who wants to. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. I rolled a six. Uh... I rolled a six. I rolled a ten. I got eleven. Guys, you're distracting me. Okay, so for August and John, John the character, we'll just call him Big. <laughs> for August and Big, as you guys are walking, al- as you guys are walking along, uh, you notice a couple more rituals they seem older like not rituals but the uh, like little altars they seem older old candles you know burned down almost to the bottom strange writings and you uh you both turn around to tell edward and doc only to realize that they're not there it seems like as you guys were walking, they just kind of started walking off in their own direction. And Ed and Doc, you uh, you go to say something to the other the other two, and you're like, "What? Where'd they go?" Oh, now it's not like it's not dark. It's it's getting to dusk time. You know, it's it's getting dark, but it's not like you can't see through the woods. I mean, I'm telling you, the NSA doesn't put microchips in your under your skin. That just doesn't happen. Well, um, no, it bad. doesn't go under Hold your on, skin. Weird. It's in the food, so you eat it, and then it gets into your bloodstream. So you're talking about nanobots right now? Obviously. Uh, obviously. Oh, oh, okay. So you're, you're talking about synthetic robots that we have have not have only begun to scratch the surface of programming no that's what they tell you oh that's what they tell what's the truth the truth is that they've been around for decades oh decades shit august and big as you are like looking around trying to you know retrace retrace your steps a little bit to try and figure out where the other two disappeared to uh you hear very large growls coming uh you know, some distance away but they are very loud almost like almost wolf i guess kind of howls but more guttural edward talk i don't think it was them and edward and doc as you continue to walk and talk about conspiracies do you try and find your way back do you try yeah, once, and find your compatriots once we notice they're gone the yelling is probably not a good idea so we should a, backtrack it's gonna take a solid 20 minutes for us to figure that out um, but yeah as, as soon as as soon as we figure actually figure it out i think we go back you just kind of follow your footprints back the way you went? Yeah. 
just turn around and, you know, there's the tree that I'm gonna follow the tree. There's no tree over there. Alright, whoever is gonna lead the way, I need you to roll cool. You're like starting to freak out. You two are starting to hear these howls. You wanna you wanna like rock, paper, scissors for the cool? You go ahead. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm so cool. I'm so very cool. Ten, not bad. I had to roll a five and a six for that, but ten. Okay, so it takes you a little bit and uh you're more angry than anything. But as August and Big are looking around, trying to retrace their steps, they see the two of you uh, come out of like a little thicket. And you do join up with the other two. You know, all of you are together again. That, that howling and growling has not stopped, and it has started getting closer. Have you guys um, heard that, though? I should be worried. That's Chupacabra, right? Obviously, that's Chupacabra. Probably. Um, when, do, when do they attack? Uh, how, how do they attack? Is it just a mauling? Just a well, they're kind mauling? of ghostly. Um, so um, Ed is going to reach into his uh, coat and pull out a one of those giant big flashlights with like the three or four D cell batteries in it. Oh yeah. Because that is one of the hidden weapons that I took Watchman's flashlight. And he is going to turn that on and start shining it around in the direction that the growls seem to be coming from holding that as a left hand. He's going to pull out his nine millimeter pistol in his right hand. It's a good idea. I should, do uh, the same thing if I have a chance with uh, other August, stuff. August is going to pull out uh, their flamethrower. Uh, you don't, you don't, you have a flamethrower? Where you are flame you keeping that? Okay. I do. The lighter and hairspray or? <laughs> <laughs> Was it like strapped to your back the whole time or is it just aerosol? The expert lighter? has a flamethrower? <laughs> yes. it, it would not surprise me if, if it it's just aerosol in the lighter. Got it. You do. You do have a flamethrower. Yes. It does three harm. It's close. It's fire. It's heavy. It's volatile. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, it's not Brother. your normal, you know, it's Get the this thing that August pulls out is not something that you would, you know, when you imagine flamethrower, you imagine this huge thing, but it's actually fairly small. Uh, they still need to hold it at their hip. Uh, but it is very stubby and very compact. I got a flame. I got a flamethrower, guys. What? Where the hell were you carrying that? <laughs> Seriously. Just, just. Yeah, you take the lead then. I also have a silver sword and a cold iron sword. We'll Jesus see what works. <laughs> I heard of the show some time back. There was movies as well. Are you a witcher? I have the silver sword. All I've got is this. And he pulls out a Swiss Army knife. Can I get the sword? I'll give I, it back. I pull, I pull out my 38 revolver and a night vision camera and pretend I'm not intimidated. <laughs> So again, you hear that that howl and growl, and is again moving. It is much closer than it was before. Uh, as Ed is, you know, moving your flashlight around, trying to, you know, get a location on it. You do that, you know, that that glint of eye occasionally, but it's not just one. It's like eight. Oh shit! And but it, but they're, I mean, they're far away. And you can't get a good sight because of the way that the sun is going down and it's, you know, it's casting shadows. Mm -hmm. You can't tell whether these things are large, small. I mean, it could be, it could be a, a what, what do you call a group of possums? Is it a trumpet of possums? A scamp, a scamp of possums? I, I don't know. <laughs> I think you'll with that one. 
Look for a trumpet. Um, trumpet of possum. So, is there a particular area where there's not them? Are they like trying to herd us? Give me a uh, act under pressure. It, it, it's it's a passel. Passel of uh, of possum. Yep. <laughs> Possums. P a s s e l. All right, so that a is a cool, right? Yes, cool. Action yeah. pressure is cool. All right. Uh, that is an eight. All right, so yeah, based on what you think, they're, yeah, they're trying to, like, corral you. Just the way that they're stalking. and you, it, it, It's not like they're totally around you. Uh, thinking back to your military days, they're at your, you know, you were heading... 12 o'clock and they're at your like three to six okay so they are kind of pushing us deeper into the woods almost deeper into the wolf wood so I think that we should continue along let them push us Are you going to make haste or move yeah. along slowly? Uh, I think we should move a little bit quicker than we were. Yeah. Yeah. As we're as we're like going through the woods here, I will like to ask a question of August. Uh, is, is that uh, the heaviest flamer you could get? Oh no. Uh, there was some other options, but uh, this one, uh, it did the same amount of damage as the others, but it uh, it, it was the most easily consumed. Oh, well, very good. Uh, but I will say uh, we missed the opportunity to get the heavy flavor. Yes. I mean, I could go get one. Not right. Like, Maybe not right. I feel well, like we're in a bad like situation. To, I would like to see the heavy flavor, though, yes. I, I do have it back in my place. You'll it's see. Quite it. impressive, by the way. I don't know where the hell you kept that thing. I didn't even notice. Yeah, because like, uh, what August looks like is she looks like a really skinny, like five foot two young woman, like with like bleach whited like hair, and like in a, like a tank top and shorts. So like, they do not. She, she does not look like the type of person. So we go around carrying a flamethrower, <laughs> like a, a cold iron sword, and a silver sword. Well, uh, when when always always be prepared. When in Rome, right? Apparently. Yeah. So there's a tool for every job, and you seem to have all of them. Excellent. False. Okay, so right. who's going to be leading the way as you guys uh, start to beat feet? Tempted to say that Big stays behind to fight off the shadows, just overconfident. Nope, let's go. <laughs> uh, Big, I need you to roll cool. God All right. Yeah. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, rolling cool. This it'll be fine. And uh. Ed, I need you to roll charm. Charm, God. Uh, six. I got a nine. Big stays behind. Yeah. Okay. Swiss Army knife in hand. <laughs> Yelling, I'm not running away. I'm not afraid of no shadows. I ain't afraid, afraid of no ghosts. dogs. I w- my big. I would give you one of my swords. However, there are three of us, and I'm gonna need at least two of them to protect these two. So, I I got the flamethrower to keep them back, but if they get close, I'm gonna need the other two swords to keep them from like eating my uncle. And Doc. 
He's like, just so you know, I have is two big swords. Is Big I truly going to stay behind? You <laughs> you have that choice. Don't, don't, don't. Just... Ed was not able to persuade you. Uh, to in Sally classic Forrest. horror movie fashion, Big stays behind. Big stays behind. Try and fight them off. Doc, Doc goes, God damn it, So Sean. the three of you push off. Why? You're not trained for this. Big waving. You can't do it alone. And uh, almost immediately, uh, as if disappearing in one spot and then reappearing in another, the howls, which were at like your behind right, now come from your behind left, and there's like no sound. And uh, big. You get a good glimpse of one of these things as almost, almost very shadow-like. It jumps from tree to tree. When it goes behind the tree, it's almost, you know, it is invisible. You can't see it. And then it bursts out from behind one other tree. And you can hear it. You can hear it hitting the ground as it's like this, you know, you have watched Game of Thrones. Big is a, a, a big fan of Game of Thrones. And you have seen Dire Wolves. That's a big dog. And yeah, if if you could imagine a dire wolf as a giant shadow monster, that is what you see. As you can hear it like padding across the the forest ground. It's a pretty puppy. Don't 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 cut it. And then it, it moves behind one tree and then it you're expecting it to come out from behind it on the other side of the tree trunk and it just just it doesn't and then from like four trees away it comes out from that one and starts circling around and as you're following that one the one that you were watching the two from the other side that you didn't know were there and I get you <laughs> So one goes for your legs, knocking you, uh, knocking you over. The other one just barely misses your head as it like jumps through the air. As you two, as all three of you like turn around as you hear this, like you hear Big hit the ground. Ed's flashlight moves around, and you see one of them just like poof. It's almost like that cheesy poof magic. It just goes. John just wasn't ready. The other one dips behind a tree and disappears. Do we do we have a moment? Can we have a moment of silence for John? No, we can keep moving. Yeah. Big's not dead. He's just not much. Over. How much harm did this? He only do? took one harm. One harm? Oh, I have what could go wrong, so I can reduce that harm to zero. I'm perfectly fine. So John just. There you go. <laughs> he gets up after being <laughs> mauled to death. Okay, are, are you going to come with us now? Right. Starts running, right. full break next to you. Just... No! 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 I said all those nice things get back on the ground! We'll never, As you guys we'll start never taking again. off, <clears throat> all right. you know, running from danger, you hear a blood-curdling scream coming from not 200, maybe 300 yards in front of you. That way. We go that way. As you guys continue to push through the trees, uh, I need whoever's going to be in front to roll sharp. Uh, Ed would probably be in front since he's got the flashlight. Anyone who wants to help out, you can as well. Uh August will help because she's probably like behind him because she has the flamethrower. So it's just like, <sighs> uh, I got a 10. What's right? Sharp. So as you guys are following this, you know, this scream, uh, there's kind of a tree that's half knocked over. And as you're, you're moving your flashlight back and forth, you find like a, it looks like hair that was like ripped out of somebody's skull like there's a little bit of like skin still hanging from it and then you like 
you know, it makes you at least slow down for a second. You see little drips of blood dropping from it. As you look around the area, you see the, uh, the, uh, forest preserve top, uh, with the name tag, Billy laying on the ground. Oh, uh, it's all shredded. Billy's in a better place. You did such amazing landscaping work. But it seems that you have uh, gotten ahead of whatever was following you. I finally found Billy. And you uh, Ed will uh, kneel down by the the shredded uniform and say a little prayer and then he will take that name tag and tuck it in his pocket and he'll pat it as he bows to avenge Billy I guess Billy was trying to be a hero well I'm sure we talked about the Wolfwood and he maybe decided to come and do some investigating of his of his own would be my guess I mean is Billy a part of all of us there's literally a song why Billy should not have been a hero isn't that you hear another one of those screams this one female like blood curdling god damn it um this one like ends abruptly. It's like a scream happened and then it was just cut off. Well, let's go. So let's head towards that one. Yeah. Oh. In the same general direction. Okay. Feeling not- like. Uh, with your guys as sharp, as you guys continue to move move along towards the screams, you do see blood. Is randomly scattered across the leaves. Fuck. How do you track a ghost? Follow the screams, they say. Do you want to know how to track a ghost, Doc would Johnson? I, would, Kinda, I yeah. track, would, would I know how to track? Would I know how to track a ghost? Well, read a bad situation. Roll plus sharp. So we ten, please. All right, you get to ask three questions. Three questions. Um, first question: These two bodies, Billy, and then the well, we don't know if it's a body or not, but the unknown assailant doesn't seem to be like. Does it seem to, like, if I could draw a curve between the two, does it seem to almost complete a hemisphere, or, like, is it just a straight line, beeline towards a direction? It is a straight beeline towards. Uh, okay, and then... Hmm. So we know it's a chupacabra. We know that we can't really fight it. Um, the wards, how do you, how were the wards made? The wards were made by humane sacrifices of the believers of Prego. Like literal human sacrifice? No, like yeah. chickens. Oh, chickens and goats. But they were Jesus. killed humanely. Humanely. Were... <laughs> in other words, their lives were ended quickly. <laughs> okay. Um, they were allowed to roam a field before they were sacrificed. Yes, and yes they were, they you know, were the, free-range the, sacrifices. Also, the use of you know the incense and the different types of herbs. Okay, so nothing we would have on hand here. Um... Keeper, at yes. this point, I would like to use another one of my holdovers from my connect the dots. 
Okay. And I would like to ask, when and where will the next critical event occur? <laughs> uh, in about in-game time, 25 seconds from behind you. Okay. So uh, Ed kind of gets this eerie feeling and he turns to face behind us brings his flashlight up and the gun taking up that classic pose with the flashlight underneath of his other wrist and waits so whether uh, it whether it was that that specific second that your eyes caught it before your flashlight had gotten there you see two of these giant like large mistaken or not mistaken misshapen dog silhouettes made of pure darkness bristling with spines red glowing eyes like embers and just as fast as you move that flashlight up they like bolt like to the side almost almost again and in like a poof um, keeper yes uh, earlier, I had uh, two questions. I only used one of them. Yes, for the mystery. Yes. Uh, could I use one of those questions now? If you wish. Now? Right. What I would like to know is what can hurt it? We well, already learned that sunlight uh, can hurt it. Magic. They're very sustainable to magic. Um, and they don't like to be enclosed. And I have, um, my, for my last question, uh, if you disrupted the ritual that was summoning them, would they dissipate? Probably. You hear yet another scream. Running towards. Running towards it. This one is very drawn out, very, very guttural, guttural, almost gurgling. You can hear the blood in whoever this person is throat. The two of you are just gonna run off. Uh, I go through. All right. Yep. Big. I'm not staying behind. <laughs> John, See you guys you again. Need, you need to come with us, John. Let's go, John. You guys run off even more. Uh, and just as another scream is being uh, let off, this one almost echoes, probably because what you come up on is maybe a some type of like mining cave maybe some old mine shaft or some old cave it looks like somebody had put up you know wood posts that may not be a mine shaft anymore but maybe at one point it was and you hear that scream echoing from out of the darkness within however you are able to see small lights like far off in the distance within question um do we find any other bodies besides billy we have not found billy's body we just found a shirt we just found a shirt and blood shirt and blood i i I don't know if we should go in the mine shaft that seems like a pretty like i mean they hate enclosed spaces right and that is true, but at the same time, going in the mine shaft feels like in every in every one of these kinds of like you know horror movie situations, you do not want to be in the mine shaft. I mean, I would have chosen to go in the shed with all the chainsaws, but uh, that's just me. Can't speak for everyone, obviously. Uh, 
question is, are they going to let us have a choice? He points back right. over his shoulder. And I'm honestly, I'm not entirely sure uh, if I trust it. There are several different mythologies of creatures and spirits who will mimic the sound of someone crying for help. And when a passerby driven to empathy goes to assist, big, real uh, sharp. The, 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 cr the creature will, you know, attack them. Uh, like the will o wisp will distract you with a, like a light and it'll send you on. Big old. Right. Are, are they still chasing us though? I need I need big to roll shark. That? Yeah. I got eight. You got eight? So just as you know, they're they're having this conversation about whether or not to go and help out. You see a giant form, that black monstrous beast with spines. You just catch the red eyes as again it goes to take a swipe at your head and you are just able to get out of the way uh it does nick you like just along the you know the back of your neck as you're as you're diving down in the cave in the cave in the cave john's one of them now run it would go up to august and try and wrestle the flame uh, flamethrower no. from them, going like, give me that. We need no, to, to, you I, know, you I will. I will strip <laughs> LB in the face. <laughs> no, no, fine, 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 fine. And big runs into the mine. Mom runs into the mine. All right, as you guys are running into the mine, this thing takes. It takes chase after you. Right, it is so you again. You hear it. Ed is going to take up the rear guard with the flashlight pointed behind them to try to fend it off because it doesn't like the light. You hear it scream because you're like kind of holding it so it's not quite hitting it all the time. And every so often as you catch a glimpse back, you see it like going incorporeal, corporeal, incorporeal, corporeal. Like it's trying to stay on you because the light's not hitting everything. And you guys get down this cave and it starts to light up and it starts to open. And you see a man who just he has his hands up. He has two daggers in both hands. You see a slew of dead bodies all around this opening. There has to be at least 10 or 12 bodies. Shoot him. Shoot him. Somebody shoot him. Oh, he, a serial killer. He turns killer. around. You found a serial killer. And he says, ah, one moment. He turns back around and jabs the knife into the last body and you hear that person scream out. And they what just the die right there on, on the- Fuck, light like, him up. Makeshift I'm altar. Shooting. <laughs> I'm shooting him. There's no way this guy's good. Shoot he him. says, now we may begin. Fuck this guy. <laughs> He gets a badass moment. Fuck this guy. Shoot him. Shoot him. Shoot him. Kill him. Kill Mr. Yeah. Are you guys going to yeah. do what you're going to do? Tell me what you're going to do. I'm kick shooting him. <laughs> All right. You're going to kick some ass. Kick I'm going to take ass. his name. All right. If you're going to kick some ass, I need uh, make a roll plus tough. Got a whole total nine. I need whoever's gonna go first. There's no initiative, but I still need to know who's gonna do what first and and on. Doc I feel like fire should be first. Okay, <laughs> I'm fine with that. Fire's first. All right, so August Most is gonna go first. Fire is first. Yeah. Either the fire works or it, it doesn't. doesn't, and the <laughs> fire's late. We got who's that off go, the table. Who's gonna go after August? I think Doc was going to shoot. Doc was going to right, Doc. Shooting so hard. After shooting Doc. With all my shooting. 
Unless Ed shoots. Uh, Ed is keeping the shadow demons at bay with the flashlight. That is all he is doing. Assuming fire and bullets doesn't kill this thing. Thing by that point. Uh, Big I, would rush in with the Swiss Army knife. I, I used uh, one a luck point to make it a twelve. Make it a twelve. <laughs> All right. I do have a thing I can do here. Um, it's yeah, called a cult confidential. First time in each mystery that I observe a monster, minion, or phenomenon in action, I may ask one question. You already saw a monster or a minion in action many scenes ago. I, w- I was hoping just to use it on this guy. I'll be honest. Okay, go ahead. We'll allow this. We're almost, it's almost um, done. Are we going? Can we harm him with the tools we have? Yes. Okay. I hope so with fire. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I bathe your ass in so much fire. In holy fire. Holy okay, fire. so Burnt August crap. is going to go first and flame. And, all right, so you rolled a 12. Yep. Which means that you will, uh, you get a bonus effect. So you can either uh, give everyone else a plus one on their next roll. You can either uh, choose to suffer no harm this round. Double your... Uh, Double your attack, or you, you can drive them away in a route. So, the double my one, like, that would mean, like, because, like, my flame throw it as three harm. Does that mean I did six harm? <laughs> yes. But what's the yes. range on your flamethrower? Oh, uh, uh, oh, well, uh, I, I would get closer. Um, because it is, because it it's close. Fire, heavy, volatile. Okay. Burn him in a holy fire. So it's close. You go up, and you let loose, and he, you do catch him on fire. You see the vestments that he's wearing underneath his uh, black suit catch fire. And he starts screaming. He drops his daggers. The fire is so volatile that it catches on all of the bodies that were behind him. A huge fire, you know, engulfs the edge of this, you know, cave as there's just smoky bodies uh, mm, that crisp, you know, like chitterlin, chitterlin smell. It smells like pork. Yeah. It's like, like yeah, that, that fried pork skin. Mmm. Deliciousness. That's what. That's what cook for a couple hours. Though. That's what human flesh tastes like. It tastes like. Pork. <laughs> However, with the light ablaze, the shadows at the back of the room grow larger, and more minions come out of the shadows. Instead of the one that you had behind you, you now have four. But yes, he took lots of damage and is running around on fire. Doc! Doc is muted. Sorry. Um, Doc's gonna shoot it good. Gonna he's shoot gonna, the man? He, he's gonna shoot the shadows? That are, apparently the man's already almost dead. Or dead. He is on fire. He's just running around on fire. He is screaming. He is on fire. That's terrifying. I, I don't like it. I'm going to put him out of his misery. I'm just going to shoot him. You're going to shoot him? Yeah. All right. Kick some ass. Roll plus tough. Uh, I think that's a plus zero, so eight. All right. You and whatever you're fighting inflict harm on each other. So as you go to shoot up. him, what's your damage for your gun? Three? Question mark. Have to... Two. Two. 
So he will take the two. But he will also hit you with... his necromatic blast <laughs> and cause you two as well as dark energies burst forth out of his body and he will deal you two harm just of, of black festering infected flesh wound ah uh. Lovely. It, it's fine. I've gotten worse than that from other things that aren't you. Ed, you are able to hold off one of these monstrous shadow dogs. The other three are beginning to encroach from to the rear of your companions. One of them licking what could only be described as the most disgusting maw lips as it goes for uh, big. But it is not their turn. It is Ed's turn. So if Ed sees that, um, can he turn his flashlight towards that one? Yes. Okay. He will do that which I'm assuming would trigger the protect someone move. Uh, protect someone is only if they take, they take damage. Okay. And he hasn't taken any damage. Okay. So the way that this works is, uh, based on how you, how well you attack. Like if you just do regular damage, they automatically get to damage you back. So like it's it's kind of a one for one, but you yeah. would be able to use your, you would be able to be like I want to protect, uh, big if he took damage, and then based on your roll, you could either mitigate all of it, turn it back on the bad guy. There's no real initiative order; it's all what you yeah. guys do. Yeah. So and yeah, I that's react. what he's basically. That's what he's gonna do is if he because he's kind of got it signed on the one behind them, sees these other ones. So if he sees one of them, the first one that moves in to attack one of his allies, he's going to sweep the flashlight around to them to try okay. to protect them, try to drive the, the shadow beast away from them. All right. Since you made no move uh, to, like, engage... One of these wool or dogs will howl, one of those piercing howls. And because of the cave and the vicinity that you're in, it is like almost mind shattering. I need everyone to roll, uh, act under pressure, which is, uh, blah, blah, blah. most cool. Cool. Yes. All right, Ed, you're okay. Ken. Big, you're okay. August is muted. Uh, can I use my move? Uh, I've read about this sort of thing and roll plus sharp instead of cool. Yes. You said roll right. and add cool? Yep. Uh, that is E10. Alright, August is okay. What happens the theoretically? Right. What happens if you get a four? If you get a four? You are not okay. You are not okay. <laughs> You're the opposite of okay. <laughs> You're the opposite of okay. You have an ongoing minus one to everything until these these dogs are gone. I have an ongoing minus one to everything until these dogs are gone. But 
you get an experience point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if we were continuing on, you would get one experience point. <laughs> two. I got two. I failed a roll earlier. <laughs> This is what Ooh, we point. mean by failing forward. <laughs> yes, failing forward. Uh, Big, you are technically next if you wish to do anything. All right. I ain't afraid of no dogs. I ain't afraid of no shadows. Yeah. Big would turn his attention from the serial killer. <laughs> Try stabbing at these dogs, shadow thing. You still didn't answer my question. Are you afraid of ghosts? That remains to be seen. I have not seen a ghost yet. But yeah, I would like to kick some minion ass. Okay, (laughs) go ahead and uh, roll your tough. Mm, Simply as one does, kick Mm. minion ass. Mm. I rolled an eight. An eight. Okay. Kick ass. So you do do some damage to this. What does your uh, your uh, knife do? My knife does a whopping one harm on a good day. All right. Uh, so you're able to catch this thing right under the jowl, or like right under the the mouth, as its mouth goes and grabs your arm, and you also take one harm. Right. And because I you know, would this trigger my protect someone. Yes, you can use that, or it sounded like uh... I had something to deal more harm. Just one more harm. Oh, okay. What is that? I... What could go wrong? You deal one more harm? I deal an additional harm. So oh. two total. Yeah. All right. By what could go wrong? So it takes two harm. You would take one. Ed, are you going to jump in and try to protect? Yeah, he was going to try to, uh, and he rolled a three. <laughs> Total? Total. Ah, uh, that's not good. So, uh, on a three... I take that harm instead. You take that harm instead, but I think something else bad happens as well. Okay. Because it's less than six. Yep. I could get a point of XP. We both get harmed, maybe. Yeah, probably. Uh, the one that I had been holding off takes the opportunity to come in and attack me. Oh, I, I see. This is why I love Powered by the Apocalypse. On a miss, you end up making things worse. That's all it says. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yes. Discretion. Big will not take one. Ed, you will take the one for him. Uh, okay. But instead of the bite letting go, it kind of like clamps you together and the dog begins to suck. The goat sucker. And it will inflict two harm on Big. <sighs> okay. Okay. So instead of three, you only got two. Uh, who wants to go next? Uh, all right, so... I, uh, I'm gonna say this What we need to all get out of this mine shaft and block it. Find a way to make th- this explode behind it so that they're trapped in here with this the guy burning is Still on fire and like screaming. And, um, and just, you know, let that happen as it lies. Um, we need to get out of here. We need to blow up the smash shop behind us, or just at least make it collapse behind us so they're trapped in here. Another burst of dark energy flows forth from this man. And 
I would uh, like to use. Uh, Do you have any armor, August? Where would I get armor? Uh, some people have armor. Probably would have been part of your gear. Yeah. Armor wasn't in the budget. Not in the budget. <laughs> it wasn't in the budget. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, I need Sorry. August to take one harm. All you get is like, a flamethrower. Burst right. <laughs> flows we out. We spent all our money on the flamethrower and yeah. silver sword. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, so uh, I would like to use my move. Um, so what I want to do is I want to get all of my companions and myself uh, out of the mine shaft and have it kind of like collapse behind us as we get out so the and how will up. you do that i'm um i don't do, do uh, you have of, explosives co- i mean you have a flamethrower collapse behind us and so like they are uh what they don't like to be contained is that it yes they don't like to yes. be contained so so like they will be contained plus we've dealt with the serial killer dude uh in the long term and as to do I have something for that? Uh, what I do have is a move called preparedness. And when you need something unusual or rare, roll plus sharp on a 10 plus, you have it right here and now. <laughs> okay, so roll <laughs> and, plus sharp. Um, I want to use I, I want to use another luck point. <laughs> uh, ah! You you can use a luck point. I, I will. You, you use roll, it. and then you can choose to use a luck point after right. that if you don't get a high enough score. I believe yeah. is what it does. Yeah. Uh, Which yeah, I so probably I... should have uh, remembered and used on my <laughs> last roll. But... Yeah. So. I, I didn't roll high enough, so I'm going to use that luck point. Okay. So you get a twelve. <laughs> yeah. You start. You start telling everybody what you're going to do, and then you're like, "Oh yeah," and I have this, you know, the Simtech that I just keep on my person for no reason. I use it as a belt. <laughs> Where the hell are you putting all this shit? I almost <laughs> excused the flamethrower, but now you have Semtech. What? Are you- do you have grenades in there as well? Where the? He's got, he's How are you doing all this in a no tank deal. top and shorts? Okay, I need. So you have the item. Yes. I need you to roll plus cool. To act under pressure. Uh, that is an eight. Okay, so you're able to, just looking, you're like, okay, we can throw it here and here. You have your Semtech, but you know what? You don't have any blasting caps. All right. You have no way to set it off. Somebody's going to have to stay behind and shoot it. Or set it on fire or blow it up, but it'll work. Uh, You know what? We can run and I have a flamethrower and we'll just... <laughs> Your flamethrower uh, is close. Uh. Here, give me that. You're not. You're not staying behind. No, I'm gonna give it to Big. He wanted to stay behind earlier. You can stay behind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, I'm not staying behind. Let this guy do it. Oh, yeah. You know what you're right. No, uh, give me that. No, actually, he's gonna throw it at the flaming guy. Okay. I mean, guy sets himself off. Yes. With us in the mines. Good thinking. No, no. <laughs> We're all still right there watching as he just jumps <laughs> the flamethrower. Subtex is all set up, and we're just like, hmm. It looks like, it looks like a bad time for him. No, no, no. We're running, running. Go, go, run. go, 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 go. So, yeah, he'll yell run, and then he will throw it at the fire the guy that's on fire 
You're going to throw the Simtic? Yep. Okay. And then run himself. Roll, kick some ass. Kick or some roll, ass. Roll, roll plus tough, I should say. All right, plus tough. I don't think right. you got it right the first time. Yeah, that's an, uh, that's an eight, but I'm going to spend a luck to get a 12. Okay. Now that <clears> I remember that those exist. So you throw this Simtech, and it lands, like, it hits him right in the head. And he's so burnt that it, it kind of knocks him over. He goes down to one knee, and it, it falls down in front of him. As he grabs... He's like on his knees and he sees his ceremonial dagger. And he picks it up and he says, I will not be defeated this time. And as he goes to like put it down to like lift himself up, that knife hits some stone in the cave that gives just the spark you need to ignite it inside. We are running, we are running. And you will take no harm from this explosion, Ed. However, I need everyone else to roll act under pressure. So plus cool. As you guys are running out as a giant flame ball is on your heels. Uh, that would be another four. Use that luck point, Look. homie. Look. Use the luck. And Use some the luck. luck. This is no luck. There is no luck on this oh, one. Oh, there's no luck? No, oh. there's no luck. You know what? I'm no glad you made that decision one. for me. I was fighting with myself. <laughs> there honestly. is no luck on this. Yep, that's uh, four. That's an eight five. for big. Eight. <sighs> Minus one, ladies and gentlemen. So Ed catches up to everyone and like blows past. That that old man speed. <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> he's like, no, so I've been in situations like this before. I know exactly how far away I like, need to be. Like, no, been here, done this. Let's go. Never again. The rest of you were running at full speed, but like he just blew by. Big and August, you take three harm from the fire as it singes your back. Doc, you take six. As chunks of your scalp are now third degree burned. And uh, he's dead. <laughs> and you're dead. Oh no. And and his if if the storyteller may allow. Um because he has he has a per he has a perk that lets him do a very specific thing, but it has almost nothing else to do other than flavor. Now, according to mine, you only are, you have an unstable wound. You are not dead unless you take oh. eight or more. Unless you take eight or more? Yeah. Well, I took two, So you're like, four, you're pretty, you're six, pretty much like seven. incapacitated. Oh. I took eight. I took exactly yep. eight. Oh, okay. Because I had two, yes. two health levels. <laughs> yeah. That. Um. Pardon me. Yes, you are. So, yes. <laughs> Doc goes flying as yeah. the explosion happens, and the the inside of the cave does go down, and you know you start to see it like closing as it's uh, as the flames go forward. Doc gets hit with the blast, and his body goes flying, and he hits a tree. You can see the flame and like smoke coming off of his back as his limp body is laying at the bottom of the trunk. Uh, could, could I add a little flavor, please? Yes, yes, by all means. Um, so yeah, he he hits it and he's smoking on the ground, and uh, like if 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 uh, John is anywhere near him, he just kind of like, come here, come here, John. John. Crawls over, unstable and dying. Just <laughs> yeah. <What? laughs> Blood splatter on the face, type of thing. When you get it right, you make a really good cup of coffee. 
<laughs> Grab onto his knee and just be like, yeah, I will. I will. He just falls. <laughs> I never even knew your real name. I just knew you was a dog. Just Kevin. slap the knee. Just <laughs> no. That is my real name. That's too somber. There we go. So yes, Doc is laid out, broken and burnt. But you know that this man could not have survived this cave-in. And as the cave-in occurred, all of the shadowy creatures are hopefully contained within the cave and should be no more. You all try to patch yourselves up the best you can and trudge the what is probably a 45 minute walk with Doc's limp body and two very burnt August and Big. Uh, Uncle Ed, please drive us to the hospital. This is the second time you've called me Uncle. And yeah. You knew to ask about my brother Philip. Is there something you want to tell me? Well, a few years ago, I'm um, obviously you know I'm British. Um, I uh, I picked up on that. You know your your brother did a summer abroad in London. And he met a lovely lady named Adriana Kelly. One thing led to another, and here we are having this conversation. Well, welcome to the family business. Yeah, he, to be fair, you know, he... Funnily enough, I met you before I ever met him, which is, I've never met him. Oh, you're not missing much. He's yeah, I've, I've never met him. Not to interrupt, but kind of bleeding out in your back seat. Me too. We're both bleeding out. You're not special, Johnson. No. And I, <laughs> I, like the gas pedal. I, I pedal that like I kind of like put my hand on Ed's like knee and I like I push it down. Like, oh, faster. <laughs> So you guys are able to make it to the hospital where uh, Officer Whitaker, Whitaker is, uh, or the other officer that I already forgot her name. Whitaker. Yeah, Whitaker. There we go. Whitaker uh, is being held. Uh, you do get treated. Uh, they pronounce uh, Doc dead on arrival. Uh, you have to answer many, many questions. A lot of them are just waved as they know who you are and who you work for or who you don't work for or who doesn't really exist that you work for. <laughs> and you are requested to go back to your normal lives, which is something that happens very often when you solve these strange cases. You are allotted by some of your peers, uh, big the girl that works at the Jamba Juice is like, she heard what happened and she thinks it's really cool. Yeah, you know. She wants to know all about Chicago. However, in a far flung basement, in a building, glittering and shiny with many windows a man stands in a total encased room as the cameras see him he is merely a shadow and then bones 
become corporeal. Then flesh and hair and a nice black suit. The man adjusts his tie and walks over to the pedestal in the middle of the room where a nice urn sits. Says, well, they didn't find this. We'll just have to try again some other day. Chupacabra. Necromancers suck. And that is where we will leave it. You guys never asked anything about the man. We did not. But yes. But what man? Yes, the, the man you caught off. <laughs> you burned. Huh? huh? What? There, huh? There were, there, were, there were many other questions, many other routes that this could have gone. You would have learned about this guy. Well, I'm yes. super excited. Yeah. You have never you found heard? you never found out who this man was, other than the 20 seconds that you took to catch him on fire and then blow him up. <laughs> to be uh, fair, he murdered a man right in front of us. He, I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he super in our defense, did. we never claimed like to be all that good at our. It job. was <laughs> that's why you guys are on the C team. Why we're Listen. on the C team. They're Listen, like, it was an immediate oh, reaction. They're like, nah, like, we really don't want to do this this week. This is our bye week. Hand it off to the C team. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> the listen, C team. listen, we are the C team. That is like the third letter in an alphabet of 26. We could be so, the Z team. Uh, I would say overall, we're true. pretty damn good. You know what? At this rate, we'll be the Z team in no time. <laughs> <laughs> what they what they didn't tell us is like, they just like stopped hiring people after team D. <laughs> so it's just A B C D. Yep. <laughs> that means there's no there's that means there's still a team worse than us. <laughs> oh one of them's getting promoted. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have to find you're gonna have to find somebody to fill the fill the empty slot too. Well, I hope <laughs> I hope everybody that's still watching enjoyed this. I I think that Monster of the Week is a very fun way to do a one shot. Uh, I like the rules. It's very 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 easy. It's a good thing to get into. It's very rules light. To be honest. Uh, so yeah, I suggest you guys check it out. The I don't know if this is the newest book. This is just the one that I found and I really liked it. Uh, all kinds of different mysteries that you can do over a couple of hours. Yeah, definitely check it out. Monster of the Week. If you guys are looking for more terrifying tales, uh, because mine are always, like, iffy, make sure that you guys check out uh, Vampire the Masquerade, Starlight and Smoke on late Sundays. And don't forget about our Vorpal Chronicle of Darkness that is continuing Tuesdays. However, if Awesome Adventures is more your bag, uh, make sure you guys check out Squeaks in the Deep on Tuesdays, Deadlands on Wednesdays, and Star Trek Adventures of the Dauntless on Thursdays. And, last but not least, the continuation of Season 2 of Scarred Lands on Friday evenings. Oh yeah, and I forgot about my own show on Fridays. Duh. Uh, Contagion Chronicle. Because I forget, this, forget things. Make sure that you guys check out our calendar for all other terrifying tales and awesome adventures that may be happening and or occurring in your local area. I need to tell you guys something. Tabletop Titties. Tabletop Titties is a queer and feminist TTRPG podcast and streaming group run entirely by people of marginalized genders. Uh, make sure that you guys check out their second season of their D&D show, Into the Revelia, that follows their players from season one as they take on Hit Point Press's hilarious horror carnival, heck no. Make sure you check it out every Tuesday on their Twitch, twitch.tv slash tabletop titties at 7 p.m. Pacific time and in podcast form every Friday. If that if D&D is not to your liking, but you do like some spooky stuff, make sure you check out their second show, Titties by Night, Vampire the Masquerade V5 show starring a cadre of supernatural investigators as they solve mysteries through uh, Victorian London. You can check out that action on Wednesdays at 8.30 Pacific Time on Twitch and in podcast form on Saturdays. For more information, make sure you check out their website, tabletoptitties.com. And remember, every time we say titties, it's with double Ds. 
Make sure you check out our website, vorpotatoes.com, to see our calendar, social media links, recaps, and links to all of our partners and affiliates. Please check them out, purchase awesome stuff through them, and support us all in the same process. Now, players, let everybody know the next time that they can see you and the cool things that they do outside the show. I am, well, once again, the Touring. That's the underscore Touring, T-O-E-R-I-N-G, on the Twitter and elsewhere on the internet. Uh, I am going to be off for the next couple of weeks, and we'll be returning on the 20, what is it, 27th and 28th. I'll be doing the uh, Eating Nasty Things uh, Challenge. Yes, one of our milestones from our... Yes. Uh, Charity that is drive the next last time that I will be uh, on stream. Uh, you, you will. Hi, my name is Ray Alexa. You can follow me on at R A Chastaway over on Twitter. Uh, the next time you guys will see me will be the dance party that we're doing. Uh, I forget what day that is. So do I. I have to look it up. Um, but you'll yeah, see me then, and uh, then you won't see me for I don't know how long. At least a minute. I am of the same boat in that you will no longer see me on Saturdays for at least a little bit. Um, and I have been Doc. I am john who is now stumbling over his words um and uh yeah you'll be able to see me tomorrow uh for unknown armies and i'm super excited for that i believe this is going to be our penultimate finale so tune into that when it promises to be good i have been the mundane john big buck I'm also Kisama. You can find me on Twitter at TrueKisama. You can find me tomorrow in Unknown Armies playing somebody. Uh, on Tuesday in our Mage the Awakening game. And later that night on Onyx Path for Squeaks in the Deep. Find me on Friday for the Contagion Chronicle. And behind a Denny's near you. Awesome. For a limited time. For a limited time. For a limited time. We're, we only got more session. So tune in. <laughs> and he'll fight you. I again I am Dwayne. Denny's. You guys can find me on the internet at Made of Kimchi. I will not be seen again until next Friday running the Contagion Chronicle. And then right after that, we start our 48 hour survival live stream playing a bunch of video games all the way to Sunday. Yay. So make sure you guys tune in yeah. for that. Should be pretty fun. But with all of this craziness out of the way, make sure that you guys keep a light on because you don't want the scary stuff to get you. But if you do, turn it off and then we'll be there. Good night. <laughs>